Yo. New Axe, what's up, man? DT, how's it going? My freaks in the house. Let's go, baby. We're hoping. We're hoping it's good. Let's let's hope it's good. Is that too much light right there, guys? Is that too much light? Let's close it. Seems like too much light. Ugh. Yeah, that seems a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. That's too much light. All right, cool, 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 cool. That is bright as fuck. All right, we closed it. We closed it. We closed it. All right, guys. Well, welcome everybody to the live stream. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, as you know, we got the campfire chat in approximately 45 minutes, which is going to be, you know, BA. It's going to be badass. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I closed it, man. It's closed. All right. Jeez, guys. DT tried to steal my first war. I saw that, man. I saw that, dog. The competition between you guys fuels the fire in the community. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't say it depends on season four, but it could be a major turning point. I think so, too. I think so, too. Um, so, this is what we're going to do, guys. Uh, welcome, everybody. No, you're good, Ray's. I appreciate you being here, man. We got a long day. We got a long day ahead of us. Okay, I just finished eating. Okay, we're going to check out this uh, campfire stream, guys. Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna either play some Diablo or get in on some uh, some Last Epoch, which we're gonna play Last Epoch first coming into this uh, before the campfire stream starts. So real quick, let me let me make sure. Let me I'm on their I'm on their channel. Where's their uh? Dang, they don't even got the thing up. Adam already tweeted out. I commented. I guys, I commented. You're going to see my comment. I did. I believe, Pez Radar. I believe. Dang, that motherfucker didn't even like it back. Gosh. A-hole. Um, <laughs> dude, where is their live at? They don't even got it posted yet. Jeez, bro. Maybe like 10 more minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> Not new X. I was first. <laughs> So check it out, guys. Uh, we got about 40 or so minutes to the campfire stream. So we got a lot to talk about. Should we do a checklist? Should we do like a uh, like a puzzle? Let's do this real quick because I will say as much as I'm real quick on Last Epoch, as much as I'm enjoying Last Epoch, uh, I did further research on this with Multishot. How it, I'm in really enjoying it. Uh, however, because of the attack speed nerfs, I don't know how well this is, so I think what I'm going to be doing is transitioning into the explosive trap build, but not the one that's using the daggers that everybody's playing. I kind of want to do it a little bit differently, and I would like to do it with the blast rain, which is kind of cool. However, I know those daggers are like extremely powerful. Um, like, I don't think you can do this. I wonder if I can take this even with the daggers. I don't think you can. Explosive trap now scales with your bow damage instead of throwing damage. And your bow attack speed instead of throwing attack speed. I mean, I kind of dig it. You've been block been knocking out rebirth? Yeah. 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 But it seems like everybody's just running the... Uh, I don't know, dude. It's so weird. I guess it's just like the blast rain is just better. Or not blast rain, but just like the normal trap skill. You made Tifa Cloud's love interest? Good. Because she's the best. She is the best. So, let's... uh. FF14 comes out on Xbox. All right. Let's 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 uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's do... um. What is it? WordPad? Let's go into WordPad chat. So, camp fire checklist. Campfire checklist, guys. Campfire checklist. All right, what's the first thing? What's the first thing, guys? What's the first thing we're going to get? So, we're going to get end game. End game. Uh... 
Let's see. Endgame. Let's see. We can put on some music, too, while we're doing this. Endgame mechanic. A uh, new question mark. To what else we got, guys? Of course, we got what? Itemization. In depth. Not just, hey, we are doing it. Yo, Modam, what's up, man? Notorious, how's it going? Uninstall D4 and play uh, Last Epoch. I do have Last Epoch up, Notorious. I do have it up, man. And I'm a little irritated because I was really excited to play multi-shot. Um, but the attack speed just doesn't work on the build. So I'm thinking about going to detonating arrow. But um, I want to do it with the explosive trap thing. But I want to use blast rain instead of just throwing it. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But anyway. Let's get back to our checklist, guys. Um, don't give up just yet, Notorious. Don't give up just yet. Chat, what else do you think we're going to get tonight? Uh, gauntlet details slash changes going forward. What else do you guys think we're going to get? Oh, season four theme question mark. Um... PTR info. What else are we getting? What else are we getting? Free Ubers. 100% will get PTR info. What else do you guys think? This is going to be our checklist. This is going to be our checklist. It's kind of like our bingo board. You know what I mean? Like our bingo board. What are we gonna, what else are we gonna get? Like, what else do you think we gonna get? Have I missed anything? Ooh, what about this? Class balancing hashtag buff barbarian. Anything else? What do you guys think? I'm hoping they reduce that dumb resplendent park spark requirement. Nah, I don't think they're going to do that. Improved Uber grind. Better Uber grind. Yo, Prophecy, what's up, man? John, what's up, dude? Auto run in a... Auto run in a deleted market area in a map with your horse. What are you talking about, John? Oh, yes. Auto run in town with horse. I got you. I got you, big dog. I'm picking up what you're putting down. End game enhancements. I got the end game stuff. Uh, what else? What else is on our bingo board? Allow Ubers to drop from all main bosses instead of... Well, Mind Freak, they do drop from all main bosses. Like, Ubers can drop from anybody. It's just... The drop rate is so much lower than it is against Duriel. So, Ubers can drop anywhere in the game. Anywhere in the game. It's just that drop rate is just... You know, it's... The, the Uber drop rate... Like, think about it like this. The, the Uber drop rate... The normal Uber drop rate is 0. That's the, and, and this is with a 1350% increase rate. That is with, that is the drop rate of an Uber after the 1350% increase rate that they just gave us. Duriel, Duriel is a 2% drop rate. This is, this is after the buff. It used to be, I think it used to be like that. And then that buff got rid of two zeros. So this is uh, this is the buff that they gave us outside of Duriel. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, what is it? The armory slash or well, armory 
for uh for build changes yes i like that yeah th this is the current drop rate and then you have a 3.0 percent drop rate for uh uber stones right now like this is this is the overworld in anywhere else in the game like you realize that like this drop rate just doesn't do shit like it doesn't do shit <laughs> like this buff doesn't do a dang thing man it's so bad specific bosses for specific ubers yes i agree with that man i talked about that many times on the stream yeah armory for build changes yeah i definitely talked about that on stream if they did that it would just be great man because then you can be like okay if if andy and shaco only drop from durial that means i know when it drops i'm getting one of the two like and then you know the staff can drop from varshan and then grandpa pa can drop from whoever you know they just need to do that they need to give us the uber variants of grigor and varshan so they're also level 100 and then we would have it like keep the level 75 guys in world tier three and then in world tier four make them 100 and then you could keep the uh beast in the ice at 85 and just give it like the weakest uber right like what's the weakest uber probably the the amulet the amulet's probably the weakest uber archer what's up man it's still probably the weakest uber right melted heart that or doombringer like one of those two one of those two are pretty those are pretty poopy those are pretty shitty chase items yes chase items all right guys anything else on our bingo board yet yeah. and then which ones are we looking forward to the most <clears throat> let's see let's see how many we get come on guys we need one more i kind of like the even 12 and i got a booger up my nose don't judge me okay i had to get it it was itchy <laughs> oh yeah still no stones or to pants unbelievable that's crazy that you haven't got to bolts the stones i can understand um let's see what else what else are we looking forward to what else is really gonna really just gonna bring it home for us oh yes yes codex powers thank you codex power rework there we go there's our 12 on the bingo board guys there's our 12 god that's bright sick Class balancing, buff the Barbarian because it's not strong enough. New skills. Well, they all, they don't give us new skills, Modam. They give us new powers. So they always give us new powers. They always give us new powers. Crimson Jiggle Physics. <laughs> Jizzle Physics would be cool. God, dude, I'm so disappointed that I can't play that I can't play this now. Ugh. God, man. This sucks, dude. I wonder. I wonder if those daggers will. I wonder if those daggers will let us do that. God, man. Do I got to respec right now? Do I need to respec? The blast knife of acid. What the heck? Detonating arrow no longer requires a bow. Oh, and it gives us five cost and plus the detonating arrow. Oh my God, it's nasty. All right, let's let's uh, let's do this real quick. Let's go visit the bazaar. Let's go. 
Are you guys excited, man? 30 minutes away. 30 minutes away. And we're going to find out. We are going to find out how to... Uh, um, Is everybody excited, ready to rock? Do I gotta like talk to all these people? Oh, okay, there we go. Yes. Hello. Yeah. All right, so we need a dagger. Let's go see. Let's go see how much this thing is. They're daggers, right? Yeah, they're daggers. The timer just came up on the Diablo channel. Perfect. Oh, here goes the blast knife right here. Oh. We ain't spending that crazy money. Uh, let's just get, yep, we'll buy that one. Just because it's cheap. And then we'll get this one. Sick. Okay, so now let's throw this on real quick and let's just let's just see. I'd have to respec, huh? D4 needs trade system. Yes, dude. That's kind of in the itemization stuff. You know what I mean? It's kind of in the itemization stuff. You're not excited as much as praying there is no drama. Well, you you already know there's going to be drama. I'm more nervous than anything. I'm with you, Crimson. I'm nervous, dude. Because real quick, cut the music real quick. I'm just going to say this. I I truly believe that this is going to be the like make or break. I think season four is going to be a huge. It's either going to be a huge turning point for the game. Or it's just going to be a rinse and repeat of what we've already gotten and more players are going to leave. Because you got Last of Pac doing really well. Path of Exile 2 uh, stuff gets spoiled tomorrow. And like, people are just going to be moving on, man. People are just going to be moving on. So it's, it's, it's kind of one of those things, man. You know what I mean? It's just... It's kind of one of those things. I kind of want to use the blast rain thing. I think that would just be cool over explosive trap. I wonder I wonder how how high this can go. Oh, it's clunky to play. Oh, oh, it's basically a bow mage. I just want I just want to see if like uh I just want to see if that if that will work. I wish I could respec more than one point, but All right. So let's just let's just see, man. Yeah, so we need this. Oh, crap. So we unlock that. So we got explosive trap now. Not happening. Where's the little training spot at? Isn't there a training spot somewhere? Let's go to the Forsaken Trail. I have a feeling they are going to fix the core issues with the DLC. People will have to buy the DLC to get a good end game. Dude, if that's the case, that's not going to be uh, not Christine for the follow on Twitch. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yo, Tango. What's up, man? I have a feeling they are going to fix the core issues. Man, dude. And you know that DLC is going to cost us a crap ton, man. Uh, we can get Shuriken back. Um, let's 
Let me just let me just read. Let me despecialize the skill. Let's throw an explosive trap in there really quick. I just want to see if um if this works like I think it's gonna. Yeah, because we want hail of arrows. Okay, so it doesn't actually make it rain at all. Oh, wait. Don't I need the... Wait, wait. Don't I need the skill that makes it to where... Wait. Which, which one says it? Crap. Which skill says that this no longer requires a bow? Oh, no. Oh, it's just the dagger that does that. Yeah, so so the the rain doesn't actually work. Aw oh, man. So you can do it like that. I mean Like chat, what do you think what do you guys think is cooler real quick? Is the blast rain thing cooler or or is it literally, like, should I just do the, the actual trap with the daggers? Because the daggers are pretty strong, aren't they? It gives plus six to detonating arrow. That's so crazy. I kind of dig the blast rain, though. Uh, Reaper of Souls is sucks. They remove trading. I mean, yeah. But that's most games, you know. But you can still do it as long as you're in a party, which is nice. Dude, I kind of dig the Blast Rain version, dude. Should we do, a, like, a Bow Mage? Just to mix it up? You know what I mean? Is it market board what killed D3? I know, but these blast knives are crazy strong, man. They are crazy strong. Okay, let's uh let's go back to the end of time. Twenty minutes, guys. Arrow traps. I kinda wanna try the bow mage first. Like I, I do. I, I like definitely want to. I want to try the bow mage over the other trap. I think it's going to be really strong. I think it'll be pretty cool. Increase cold damage. Wow. Yeah, they were. They did remove trading. You can only trade if like you're in a party with somebody, and the items drop when you're playing together, which I think is fine. I still think that that's fine. Uh, Reign of Winter. Because I'm not quite to six. I'm almost there and I can buy legendary powers. Um, man, that's a low roll, huh? Looks like 50, 59, 28. 50, 59, 28. Okay. Ooh, the, here we go. That's good. Okay. Yeah, that one, that one is pretty good. Damn. That one is also very good. All right, cool. I'm like running out of money. Oh, I got to be 70. Three levels. Which one's actually stronger? 48, 47, 49, 48, 8. So this one's slightly better. Dang, man. Ward trail. We need the teeth. Where's the quiver? Where are quivers? Am I just like blind?
there they are. Because I don't, I don't think I have it. I don't think I have this. Dude, I'll tell you what, I'm running low on money. Seventy-five. Oh, that's really good. That's all the same. I'll just take this one. Perfect. Oh, so that one I can equip. My lights are going crazy right now. <laughs> what the? I gotta replace that bulb. Let me check my stash real quick. Uh, what am I looking for as far as the belt? Ward trail. Ooh, I do have it. Sick. That's actually pretty nice. Boom. Okay. That's it. That's all I need for like because I'm pretty sure I have the boots. Pretty sure I got the, the Morning Frost boots. I'm fairly confident I got Morning Frost boots. I don't. Dang, I could have swore I did. Nope, I don't. Dang. Okay, let's go look at boots real quick. Turn your room into a club for about a minute war? I know, dude. Let's see what we can find. <laughs> All right, sweet. Uh, modifiers of breeze rates up to 100% and movements up to 20. So we need to get uh, some good rolls here. 87. I mean, I guess it 10%. Oh, come on, man some good movement on these 16 and 61 but i'm not paying 50 grand for them not when i can just buy them i guess i can just try to find some better ones 80 and 11 13 yeah i guess oh here we go 80 87 and 16 so i'll take these i'll spend 30 grand all right, now we got boots. Now we got boots. They need to do this. Diablo needs to do this. Diablo needs to do this, man. They just do. Diablo needs to do this. You know what I mean? They just need to do this. They need to do this. So now we're going to dump Flurry. <laughs> no. It's okay. Don't worry, guys. We'll get it all back. Don't you worry. We'll get it all back. We also don't need this anymore. I don't even know what I'm going to put there. Oh, I guess I could put my shurikens back, huh? Shuriken. How do you can? Yeah, because the shuriken thing is, is pretty cool. I guess. We'll just come get this stuff. 
All right, so we got dash, shuriken. We'll move this to that for now. And that's it. So let's put this on, these on, and we got to hit 70. We got to hit 70. All right, let's go run a let's go run a thing, guys. Let's go run a money. You know what I mean? Let, let's go see what we can do. You know? If you can't drop good items or craft good items, why not just buy them? I know, right? That That's exactly how I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? They just like the, like the, the market there is just so good. It's so good, man. Oh my god, the cost of explo explosive trap. Oh my lord. Oh my god. Oh yeah, I'm going to need to I'm going to need to swap my rings out. Good lord, the cost. That doesn't do anything. Good look. The cost is insane. Dude, that cost is so, so high. Oh my God, that cost is so high. I gotta, I gotta adjust my rings and stuff, guys. I mean, the explosive trap is crazy. 10, 12 minutes, guys, 12 minutes. Oh, I guess this is why we have a generator of some kind to like mess with this. Interesting. Frisky! What's up, man? The main guy's here, isn't he? I gotta get I gotta get some more skill points. Oh, I'm frozen. Holy crap. Dude, that cost is so high. Why is detonating arrow so high? Waiting to see how bad this campfire is? No, frisky. We're being positive, man. We're being positive. I do like this with the, the, the rain. I definitely dig that. We just gotta get we gotta get some more skill points in this stuff. We believe, dude. We believe, brother. No, don't die. Run over the traps, dang it. I need more traps. We gotta hit, we gotta hit 70. You took Circle of Fortune for better drop weight? Nice, okay. I mean, so multi-shot was being fine. It's just the overall, the, uh, the damage and stuff on it, like the attack speed, I double checked. It has been completely nerfed. So Demon was right. It's been like really nerfed. So there's like nothing we can do about it. So like the build is only gonna be so good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to transition to mage, bow mage. 
and rock explosive trap with the with uh uh like acid rain arrows okay, that should be pretty cool well, i also need to redo all my skills i don't even know what i'm doing how's it going Vern? you ready we got about 10 minutes I mean, when these traps hit, though, it's kind of crazy, man. This is going to be fun. It's going to be fun to play this build. I'm going to miss multi-shot, but... Oh, that's the big guy. He's the one causing such a fuss. I guess I should probably do the, my, the rest of my passives, huh? <laughs> I like the blast rain, the blast rain effect on here for mage. I dig that. We gotta change all my passives. We're ready. We are ready. I need money, dude. I'm down to my last 20,000. I had 400 grand last night. Yes, ready for the stream in 10. Let's go. We already got our uh, bingo board ready. Ready to go. <gasps> bingo board ready, man. What is he doing? Will he just die? One percent, thank you. All right, we gotta change our passes, and then we're gonna swap over to the to the thingy majig. We're gonna swap over to the thingy majig. All right, let's go. Let's go respec all of our passives really quickly. Passives thirty six into rogue. We already got our six into Falconer. Let's go respec really quick. Come on, Blizzard. Give us something fun. Dude, I, I hope so, man. I, I really do. I really, really do. I'm hoping. Boy, am I hoping. Okay, so all that's typically the same. This will get... Oh, we are actually all using this. Okay, interesting. We're not using these, though. Okay. All right, cool. All right, so we're going to go up here. Yep, all the Oh, but we are taking the points back into this now. And we're also taking the glancing blow. What's this? Health gain, mana gain. When you use a skill that costs 0 mana, How is it going to cost zero mana? It just seems weird. <clears throat> I don't know how that's possible. I will take the eight points in that, though. Let's go to Blade Dancer. What are we putting on here? Glancing Blow. That's just giving us move speed. Okay. So do we actually need that? I'm cool with the eight points there. Let's go back here. Oh, there's not eight points here. I see. Okay, hold up. Hello, traveler. That's what it is. Why can't I remove that point? Sweet. Hello, traveler. Weird. There we go. I'm like, dang, what the heck? How much does Joe Papora look like Julian from Trailer Park? <laughs> oh my god, dude. He now that you say that, he does look like that. Oh my god. Guys, don't think we're getting a loot filter. That's not happening. Oh my god. 
That is so funny. <laughs> all right, so we're taking one in here. We're taking all five there, but what else are we taking? One point here. Four points in here, and then five points from death from afar. We're taking one and one. Uh, we're taking one. And then we're going to take points there, but we're taking three in here for Barrage of Pain. Um, do we want to put the five points here? Increase movement speed. Perfect aim. Yeah, let's just let's just do that so that's done. Then we can put our last two points here for increased detonator arrow explosion area. Let's grab that. Okay. So we'll worry about the ganting, the dodge and parry, and then these things later. We got the falconeer thing, which is great for detonating arrow. Okay, so now let's go to skills really quickly. Because we got about three minutes. Three momento. God, the lag right now is being it's being silly oh crap i didn't want to do that i actually need these yeah i needed those shikes oh well okay whatever it is what it is it is what it is it is what it is man Dude, the lag right now is being crazy. What is up with the lag? Uh, yep. Um. Oh, we're just kind of like three points. Let's just grab this. Yes, larger area. Thank you. Okay, guys, those are set. Let's exit the desktop. Two minutes to go. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Refresh. Oh, they're doing the they're doing the thing. The gauntlet is a new. Let me know if you guys hear it. Okay. Your dungeon. Where players have a fixed amount of time to achieve high scores by proving their might. Any player who unlocks World Tier Four by proving their might can compete in the gauntlet. The gauntlet starts several weeks into the season of the construct. At the beginning of each week, a new gauntlet replaces the current one. Unlike other dungeons, every time you and other players enter the gauntlet that week, it will be exactly the same. Same monster positions, same affixes, everything. This makes it a fair competition. Additionally, monsters within the gauntlet start at level 100. This is meant to test your fully leveled up and geared up build. It's highly replayable, enabling a broad set of player choices. Players can try different classes and strategies for achieving high scores. Leaderboards are a place for top players to compete with one another in the gauntlet. These were set each week when a new gauntlet appears. There are solo leaderboards for each class, as well as party leaderboards that vary with party size. And of course, there are a set of leaderboards just for hardcore players too. But some players may not be ready for that type of play, so we've created goals for them as well. Each leaderboard has a ladder that you climb to reach it. Each rung of the ladder awards a seal that you can show off. Sound okay, guys? When you earn the seal, Volume more, turn it up. You'll be ready for leaderboard competition. Is that good? Can't wait to see you in Sanctuary. Wow, Vern. No way that's true, Vern. Is that true? Here they are. Hello, Diablo community. Welcome All looking to super Diablo tired. for Campfire Chat. Uh, we have a lot to talk about today. I say that all the time, uh, but I will say that this, <laughs> this yeah, time we really, we let really, them really decide. do. Yeah, let the people we will decide. let the community decide. Let the people decide I, how I tired we this, look. This is let them this decide. Is a lot though. Uh, but <laughs> my name don't is trust, Adam don't trust Fletcher. <laughs> my name is Adam Fletcher. I'm the community lead for the Diablo franchise. Of course, I'm joined by a wonderful panel here, plus one other who is off Where's camera Joe's and will be drink? jumping in. Uh, Look at his Benny, face. Uh, game designer on Diablo 4. Uh, Mr. Joe Shelley, who is He's the just game tired director of the Diablo bullshit, 4. Man. And Mr. Joe He's Park like, I'm ready Warren, to move on from the game director of Diablo 4. Hold and on. we will be 
joined by Adam Jackson, who's the lead class designer of Diablo 4, uh, before we we um, get to, to the class-specific uh, information that we're going to share today. But I know Joe wanted to jump in, talk a little bit about um, some of the things we're going to be uh, talking about today, and then we will go through a plethora of Why is he just stonewalling us? Look at floor. him. And of course, details about the first <laughs> he ever needs a scotch. Uh, PTR, Public Test Realm. Here we go, for PTR. D4. Uh, and for people who don't know, Public Test Realm is kind of like a private server where players can actually end up playing uh, early content and test that out and provide feedback to us. Um, so we'll go through all the details on that as well. But Mr. Joe Shelley, want to kick it off? Thanks, Adam. Yeah, so I want to frame this update. This is a season four update. We're going to talk a lot about systems here. And I wanted to do a little bit of framing. Um, when we think about um, Diablo, right? Diablo is an ARPG. Everybody knows what an ARPG is. Here we go. Right? <clears throat> um, it's an action role-playing game. Um, but it's such a broad category, right? You have lots of games that are ARPGs. Um, like a game like Hollow Knight, for example, um, is an ARPG, but it's also a Metroidvania, right? Or a game like Hades, which is an ARPG, but it's also a roguelike. Mm -hmm. Or something like Elden Ring, which is an ARPG, <laughs> uh, but it's also a Souls-like, right? So when you think about what is Diablo and what is Diablo for, um, you could call it a Diablo-like, sure. Um, but another way to describe it would be as a systems ARPG, right? An SARPG. Um, and so what distinguishes this kind of game from those other games that are in the same space that are all ARPGs, right? What is he trying to do? And it's really about when you're making decisions and what the most important decisions you're making are. The most important decisions in a game like this are the decisions you're making before combat, between combat. Decisions you make in combat are important too, but those are the ones that are the most important. Yeah, new acts, that's what I'm, that's what I'm Action, hearing. Action combat, RPG elements, and systems are all foundational elements of any, of any ARPG. But in a systems ARPG, the, the systems in particular, including the end game, itemization, things like crafting, those are what comprise the soul of the game. And they're the lifeblood of a game like Diablo 4, and they don't just have to be deep, but also lush, prolific, uh, exciting. <laughs> so as long as we know, we've been designing this update for a while. Um, we're putting it on PTR because it's important, <laughs> and it's important to get it right, like Adam was saying. I think so too, Mind Freak. That, and everything yeah. you're about to, that you'll hear about today is from that S part of the SARPG, the soul of it. Joe, Adam, Adam uh, and Charles are going to take you through the changes, all the changes, in detail. And there are a lot. So sit back, grab a drink, get your React faces ready, <laughs> uh, and let's do it. Awesome. Well, appreciate it, Joe. Um, so I know uh, what we want to do first, we, we kind of have an agenda of items, but one thing we do want to talk about really quickly is about PTR. Um, we do want to get some housekeeping notes and what players can expect from PTR, along with the dates for PTR so when they can actually jump in. So season four PTR is actually going to start on April 2nd and it's actually going to run for a week through April 9th. So players will be able <laughs> to jump into PTR and uh, okay, PTR, try April everything 2nd. out that we're, we're about to tell you all about uh, here in this uh, stream. Now so I know next, a lot of people are probably weeks. asking like, two hey, weeks, guys. Two that weeks. seems pretty close to the end of season three. Is we're only getting seven days with the PTR, to, that's it? You know, the feedback that we're going to be getting from PTR. Joey, what's and up, I man? will note here that we do plan on actually extending season three for uh, this. So season three is actually going to have a new end date. We're pushing it back a few weeks uh, to ensure wow. that we get all the feedback from this PTR and we apply it to season four to make sure that all these new system changes that we're doing are, are right and, and work for the community uh, based off of everyone's feedback. So season three is now going to end on May 14th. And of course, with that, season four also starts on May 14th. So there are some uh, a few different uh, so changes coming So they're extending on, the uh, end game the by schedule. two so you'll weeks see that in -game, and only giving uh, us one week of PTR, notes, like, that's it? It's actually ending change uh, today, probably, um, with this new date for players uh, so that Looks like Again, the big show with the beard. Make sure that we apply all the feedback from PTR, which starts on April 2nd through April 9th. Uh, one other note is that, again, PTR itself 
is uh, specifically for PC Battle.net only. So this just allows us to be a little bit more agile on our team. Does this mean that PTR is only going to be PC you... Battle.net only in the future? No, it doesn't. We are going to try to explore other ways of being able to bring PTR uh, when we do have a PTR uh, to, to players uh, in the future. Uh, but for now, this one is PC Battle.net only. So, and we'll have instructions. I on honestly how to expected actually, like two weeks uh, of PTR. But... Get into uh, the the. I was expecting two weeks of PTR, but on uh, Diablo Four through the PC Battle.net client uh, next week when we actually have a full blog that will explain kind of all the details of how to do that well before uh, the start of uh, PTR in itself. Um, but then there's other notes with PTR uh, as well um, because. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot of questions of like, well, am I starting with like a level one character? Am I taking my existing characters? Um, since PTR itself is go. a like a fresh new server, um, mm -hmm. you will actually be starting fresh on PTR, but we do have boosting options uh, available um, because we need players to actually jump in and test out some of these these features that were were obviously in these system changes that we're we're doing okay, specifically that's the same thing they did in, in Diablo three. So I, I think we actually have a slide, I believe. Um, speaking of which, I know I I I'm actually bring the camera back to me, <laughs> Lucas. Sorry, uh, I I've, I've seen a lot of feedback about hey, you guys have a lot of slides. Sometimes the slides have a lot of information specifically um, in. Uh, them that we need Who to actually cares showcase about the slides? because there Move might be a on. lot of details in there. I will say we will have slides today because there's a lot to share. But we also well, have a you're going to be able to do stuff, so Joey, because they're giving be us a chance to, to be boosted. So you're going to find changes, out. Uh, so a week may be enough time. A lot of players want to see more gameplay or see see. Depending on game, what the so boosts are, we, we may be able to do it. Okay. Now we here we go. Instantly boost your character to 100. So there will be PTR boosting features available for for players that are jumping into PTR. Uh, you will be able to boost a character immediately up to 100. Uh, when you do do that, you will receive 100 million gold and 1,000 obols. You can do this multiple times. You can even trade amongst gold uh, across your characters, of course. And then uh, we will also mark the campaign complete, com uh, completed for your character. Yeah, but as how well are we getting the boost? That's what I want All your know. skill points and more. Um, skill points again. Paragon, uh, Fog of War will be sure. completely cleared. Altar of Lilith points will also be cleared. It's actually going to match the Renown progress on your your uh, original Diablo 4 account. So if you've already done all your Renown rewards and everything, you'll end up getting that completely Oh, uh, so they're not uh, doing what they do in Diablo 3, which PTR. gives us the opportunity uh, and of course, to buy all the class system mechanics, things caches like that give us like a bunch of legendary uh, or, drops. Or like oh, that sucks. Stuff will, will be, um, that means we still got to go find stuff. for you for this character That's that lame. you end up do creating for PTR or any other characters that you create. And That's then all lame. your Paragon Glyphs will be unlocked and legendary drop rates will be doubled. Um, and I believe uh, uh, glyphs are also yeah glyphs um, are max yeah also, glyphs are also yeah. okay the glyphs are max so you will have that uh, capability there. There are like a few things that will be um, not present in PTR, but that is uh, like for example uh, one of the things is uh, Codex of Power. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we'll explain why here in a, in a, in a minute. Um, there, there's some more details related to Codex of Power uh, for players to kind of understand. Hey, that's uh, why on our list. That's not present there. So we will be accepting, of course, feedback uh, uh, for the PTR across all our different social channels, across all our different community channels. And we will be turning on a specific PTR forum on Diablo4.com. See, uh, they didn't say how right we now, get that boost. So no one can actually see it. Uh, they didn't say how we get the boost. come online, we will also be checking feedback It's always there. something, um, man. So please provide feedback based off of everything that you are hearing today. It's always and something. playing through during PTR between those dates that we actually mentioned because oh, you'll the get team feedback, is going to be looking right. at it <laughs> and making sure that we um, can make any changes before uh, the start of Season 4. Um, so with with that, now that we've gotten through the, the PTR like housekeeping notes, yeah. um, Mr. Joe Pike. We'll I hope in. so, Mike. Okay. Let's There's, dive in. There is quite a bit to cover today, so we're going to try to move briskly through parts where we can. Uh, so there's three major things we're going to be discussing today. Uh, the first, Charles will be br bringing us through a number of itemization. Uh, I told you balance was coming. See when season four goes live. I want to. I want to also buff uh, barbarian. be very clear that the changes we're talking about today are all going to be on the eternal realm and on the seasonal realm. Mm -hmm. Not actually talking about the season specifically today. We're really talking about this massive item update and in, uh, in other these other updates that are happening, kind of in parallel to season development during this time. 
So that's me the first. Uh, the, uh, the first we got part. a month and a uh, the half. Next, I'll be guiding us through some of the new in-game content that we've, uh, we're going to be implementing and integrating into the uh, the season four release. Uh, and then uh, Adam Jackson uh, is going to be coming on to talk about a lot of the live class updates we're making across the, uh, the various mechanics of the game. So there's a lot to look forward to. Uh, let's go ahead and just, I guess, dive right in. Charles, you don't <laughs> mind taking us away. Yeah, absolutely. Let's start talking about uh, itemization. So Here we go. When we think about the itemization updates, Here I think go. it's really helpful to frame this conversation around some of the goals that we have for the itemization update. So our number one main goal here is to focus on quality of items over quantity of items. So one of the persistent points of feedback that we've gotten since we've launched Diablo 4 last year was that a lot of the items that you find in dungeons and, and throughout the game, uh, you, you end up just sifting through a lot of items, searching through your inventory and, and reading a lot of lines of text. And ultimately, a lot of the items just end up being junk for you. And that was never really... 90% of the really items felt great. are junk. And, and so with this update, that's been our driving... Uh, our number one goal is to focus on making sure that when we do give you items, they're high quality items, they're much more likely to be useful for your build, rather than just flooding you with endless streams of often junk items. The second uh, goal we have here is that the best items in the game, the, the, the really pinnacle ones that you uh, get at the end game, they have a, a journey associated with them. Uh, as I said before, you were kind of sifting through your inventory and, and looking for these items, but once you found it, once you found that, that you know, perfect item, it, you were pretty much done. It, it was basically a complete item, and it, you're already done with the item. You, you, you've completed Wait, are it. are they about to say crafting? We think that the game is a lot uh, more engaging when you have a, a bit of a journey, an investment, uh, whether it be in time, crafting materials, and, and you really get to customize and make items your own and make it feel like this is for me and my build and my character. Yeah, and feel that power progression, too. It's so Absolutely. It's the experience. Yeah. Yeah. And the third goal that we have here is to focus on moments of surprise and delight in, in the itemization chase. Th this leads to, to moments they haven't of, said anything you know, yet. hey, I found the item. You get really excited about it. And you just, you know, um, you have these, these infrequent moments. It's not going to be all the time. But when you do find it, you're going to know it. You're going to feel it. You're going to be really excited about what just dropped. Um, so with that, we have a, a number of topics within the itemization update. So the overview here is that we've got uh, updates to existing systems, such as uh, base items uh, updates. We've got uh, a few additional updates that are kind of adjacent to the itemization system. Uh, we've got some updates to Codex of Power, which we sort of alluded to earlier, and I think those are going to be some really uh, big wins. Um, What's up? We also have some new systems <clears throat> being introduced here. We've got... Uh, tempering, which is going to be a new customization system. I got Greater you. affixes, which help to uh, provide some chase in the end game. These are going to be some of those powerful items ones that have greater affixes. And then once you do reach that end game with, with great gear, you're going to be able to masterwork it to really unlock its full potential and upgrade it to the best possible version that it can be. So let's hop into some of the base item updates. So this is where we're going to focus on making a smaller pool of affixes that are more relevant and more potent for your specific build. So as I kind of mentioned earlier in the goals section, a lot of the affixes and, and stats that appear on items, they were often very conditional, right? You had like damage while berserking or damage to close enemies or, or things that were hyper specific and, and ultimately just were yes. kind of meaningless in, in a lot of ways. Yes. They, they blended Stop together. Me these we really in this. focus the in this rework, so we're, we're focusing on reducing that pool of affixes to be uh, more general. They're more applicable to a lot of builds. They're not going to be this hyper-specific conditional. And they're going to be more potent. So some examples here, we've got ranks of a single core skill. Uh, sometimes on gear, you would find uh, items that have you know, ranks of upheaval, ranks of whirlwind, and ranks of double swing, all on the same item. And Almost no build wants all three of those things at once. So we've made it so that, hey, only one of these can appear. That makes just the subset of items that you find much more likely to be relevant for you. And in terms of like being more potent, we're looking at things like in World Tier 3, only sacred items are going to appear. Um, and then once you get into World Tier 4, only ancestral. Only those oh, most it only took you four seasons to do that. This means you're just getting less junk, right? Sometimes you get you know, sacred items in World Tier 4, and that never felt great because, hey, I'm in World Tier 4, I should be getting the best items now. We also did a pass on the affix values to make sure they're a bit punchier, that you, know, you could feel it when you really equip an item. 
Uh, this often was just, you know, some numerical tuning. Uh, in the past, you might get an oh. item that said, you know, plus 2% critical strike chance. And honestly, the, it, it was hard to ever notice that. Um, or like plus, you know, 5% damage or something like that. And, and those really small values uh, were, were just hard to ever notice when you're swapping it. And, and it never felt like you got to upgrade your gear. So let's take a look at, at, um, at, at some examples here. Oh, here we go. Um, oh, right. So the other update is that we, we are uh, reducing the total number of affixes on gear that, that initially drops. So legendary items used to drop with four affixes, four lines of stats. Uh, that's going down to three. And then rare items, the yellow items, used to have uh, up to four. And now they'll just go down to two. And Oh, uh, yeah, so the, the goal here, once again, is, is to really focus on the quality of the, huh. the affixes that appear on the gear rather than just the pure quantity. And this also gives us room to uh, build on it in some of the later crafting and, and tempering systems. I was going to say, I think they're going to let us craft a fourth affix on here, guys. But the base item is going to start with a little bit less. They're going to let us craft to an affix on. One of the changes that we're making in response to this also, like we know that right now like rare items are the items that players are using to trade in situations where you find like a really, really powerful template item. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get a max roll helmet with CDR and such, right? Like, there's a, like these are still really important for players. So as part of this change, we're, we are going to open up trading to allow legendary items and oh! unique items mm. to also be tradable uh, in the uh, uh, starting what? Of season four. This is a big change for us. Uh, now, one distinction here to keep people on, to let people keep this in mm -hmm. mind, is that crafting on either of these items, whether you're going to be tempering or masterworking or anything else later on down the road, uh, these things, like enchanting does today, these make these items uh, account bound. So you can't trade them uh, once you get them and after you've, uh, after you've done, some cra done some crafting on them. So we think this does a great Holy job. Holy crap, sure dude, we're going to be able to trade legendaries. And that when you're looking for a specific item or an item is dropped for you that a friend can use, it's going to be a lot easier for you to go ahead and hand those things around now. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's... Uh, oh, by the way, I'm going to know. Oh, Hi. Adam Jackson. Oh, yeah, Adam Jackson's Jackson not so right. yeah. Trading yeah. is a big and that, deal. And that was yeah. the same yeah. thing I'm before. When you, like, added a yellow item, you couldn't trade it out. Trading failure. Holy crap, we can trade legendaries. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Oh absolutely. That's a very God. important note, and I know a lot of people, uh, you know, might have saw this and thought, "Oh, rare That's items." That's so are now, good. Um, you know, how can I trade? Uh, but now you can still be trading these legendary items that you find if they're useful um, <coughs> oh for you, or you think God. they might be useful for a friend. Oh, and also, I should say also, uh, uber unique items are not going to be tradable. Uh, right. Exactly. Four. That's there fine. That I'm okay unique. with the yeah, uniques not being tradable yet. Yeah. 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 The those rares are, being traded is so good. If you want those, you're going to have to go and find them yourself. That's right. Those are That's the most still items so the good. Game. All right, so let's take a look at, uh, at a oh closer my example God, here. God, so finally. Got, uh, you know, kind of on the left, uh, before, this is a, a boned wand of serration. Uh, this was before. We can't trade uniques. This is what you could currently get on live. And you can see how it's got, you know, plus intelligence, vulnerable damage. Damage to shadow damage over time affected enemies. That is a mouthful. Uh, yeah. Same with the lucky hit uh, chance to execute injured non-elites. These are the, the really hyper-specific affixes that we're talking about that really uh, bloat items. It takes a while to parse this. Like You just can't, at a glance, tell, hey, is this even good for me? Yeah, reading through a number of conditional additive damage modifiers is like when you're like item to item, it's just very, yeah. it, is, it is taxing. Especially when you really fill up your inventory with, you know, uh, 30 plus of these items, yeah, trying yeah. to sort through them all at once when you just really want to get back into the action, right? You want to get back into fighting demons. Mm -hmm. So in, in the, after this itemization update, in the after section here, we have got a similar item. It has intelligence. It has plus damage. That just applies to all of your damage. It's not, you know, hyper-specific. And we still do get a, you give you a larger bonus if you're hitting vulnerable enemies with this. Can and it's, you get okay. an item now that gives you, like, int, dex, and strength on it? No, in fact, because this uh, wand uh, is uh, just has intelligence on it, it is just the main stat for your class. Got it. So if you are a sorcerer, oh, that's you're so only going to find intelligence on items. If you're a bard, you're going to find strength, and so on. I can still find all stat, right? Yes. Okay, all stat yeah, you still have all stat, but no more you're going to find, oh, I got you know intellect on my barbarian. That's just basically a completely dead stat for right. you. Got it. All right, so let's take a talk about some of the other additional updates that are kind of adjacent to the, the main itemization updates. Um, legendary item drops from monsters that are level 95 and, or higher are always going to be at uh, 
item power 925. That is the highest item power in the game. <laughs> and once you're really facing the toughest monsters in the game, we want to make sure that you're constantly getting the best possible items. Okay. This really comes back to our idea of quality over quantity. Uh, <laughs> once you're at this point of the game, you don't really care about anything that isn't 925, so why are we dropping that for you, right? You're gonna be kind of graduating out of caring about item power because you just know that everything I'm getting I mean, this is, is nice. the maximum item power. Uh, next, we've done a pass to update our gems. They are a little bit simpler. Some of the gems used to have, uh, once again, those very conditional things like <laughs> critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies was like one stat on one gem. Uh, so we've kind of simplified it, so we now just have bonus critical strike damage or bonus vulnerable damage. Uh, we've also added uh, some, some updates to have core stats on them. So some of the gems will have strength, some will have dex, and so on. <laughs> and they'll have a little bit of a longer Ooh. crafting tail. You see this? Uh, they're a bit more powerful at the top end, but they do require a bit more investment to really unlock that highest power level. Oh, that's huge. And once you have all the gems that you want, uh, excess gems will now sell for quite a bit more gold. So oh, that good. way you're, you're not really going to waste once you, you have kind of found those best gems. Additionally, we've done a pass on the salvage uh, crafting and rewards have all been uh, retuned for this new world where Please. we're dropping you know, less items than before. Uh, once again, we're, we're focusing on you have less time sorting through your inventory and more time getting back in the action, more time slaying enemies uh, to find those items. Yeah, there's much less cruft in this version of the feature, right? Yeah. Like you, you're not walking out of a nightmare dungeon with 25 items mm -hmm. no. to go and deal with at the uh, back at the, uh, right. the blacksmith. But the ones that you do have are much more likely to be relevant and useful to you yeah. when you do find them. That's good. Uh, additionally, we've uh, item rerolling the enchanting system at, at the occultist. Yeah, it's crap. Uh, we know this has been. Uh, it has like a it's scaling shit. gold cost currently. It's shit. And that just keeps on ramping up. If you want to keep fishing for that perfect affix, it could cost millions upon millions upon millions yep. of gold. Uh, DT we knows. put a cap on that. Uh, we don't think it's really healthy to have that actually scale infinitely. It'll still get a, a little high, but it, it's not going to go to infinity. Um, we've I wonder what the cap taken is. a pass on the materials, the crafting materials, uh, things like ore and herbs. And some of the other crafting materials in the game, and a lot of the ones we had some variety of, of like common herbs, so uh, that were found in different zones, and and there was some nice flavor there, but ultimately they didn't really provide much compelling gameplay. So we've consolidated all of like the common uh, crafting materials into just a single type, just uh, just basically common herbs, and oh, then okay. there's still some rare ones to find to find uh, to craft the most powerful elixirs and and so on. That's um, nice, I guess. We, you know, simplified that system so your collection uh, Bottom is a little line, bit easier, more streamlined. I mean, some yeah, of these things are kind of like, nice. Like, like a lot of monster parts, eh. from, like uh, Pale Tongue and things mm -hmm. like that, are also have been removed as part of this experience. It's going to make it a lot easier to craft elixirs in this new world. Absolutely. So, and you don't have to scroll through that tab so long to see yeah. exactly yeah. what material you want to <laughs> yeah, yeah. craft with. Yeah. Especially when they ultimately just, you know, fed towards that same goal. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then the final update we've got is... Uh, updates to the Forgotten Souls, right? So the, the late Please game give us crafting uh, material that you use for a lot of the enchanting yeah. or, or other crafting systems, uh, we're making them a little bit more accessible. Uh, they'll come from Whispers of the Dead caches, and they can also rarely drop globally from, from any elite in the game. And this is a really cool moment. Um, that, that You kind of have this, this jackpot moment. Uh, it, it's pretty rare when you kill elites, but there is, there's a moment where you just get like this explosion of loot, uh, and it you know, you know, sp uh, spits out a ton Why of, can't of they the Forgotten just be Souls, good all the time? Or, or other loot, or um, other crafting materials. And, and that's, that's a really exciting moment uh, when you encounter it in-game. It's, it's pretty rare, but you know you, know you kind of hit the jackpot. Uh, when when that does, I'm happen. gonna say this: if we get like two from a whisper right? cache, oh, yeah, it's a, a complete waste. Any elite in the game. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, also, we're looking at just give it to us for salvaging uniques. legendary so, items. items. Like it's not are, rocket science. You know, these really build defining, flashy, uh, unique items. Right? They are they are very powerful. Uh, currently, they are locked behind just World Tier Three and onward. They're really late game items. And we thought that uh, to really get you into the fun faster, to get your build online, we've made it so that many of our uniques in the game wow. can now start dropping in World Tiers 1 and 2. Okay. So you can start getting them <clears throat> earlier on in the experience and really get your build going uh, much quicker. And then once you do get into World Tier 3, then all of the uniques in the game have the potential to start dropping, including uber uniques, which are typically those very late game chase items. There is a chance that monsters starting at level 55 uh, drop these uber uniques. It's a pretty small chance. It's very rare, but it's one of those moments that you're going to find, uh, you know, 
if you're really lucky, Dude. you might find uh, Stop Harlequin Express. Yeah, you'll, remember that place, you'll remember that playthrough for sure. Oh, you definitely will. We all know right? we're and, still and gonna have to do Duriel oh, to get him. Kind of going yes. back to our goals of itemization update in general is that you know, like at any time, something really exciting can happen. Right? That's mm -hmm. the main impetus for doing this is that. Even early on in the game, you can get the main thing that you're looking for. It's going to be very rare, yeah. not very common, but it's possible. And even some of our other updates mm -hmm. coming that you're going to explain is kind of going along that vein, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, we want you to have the, the chance to, to really ha have that high roll moment, that really exciting moment when you find that awesome loot. Yeah, that's never going to happen. That uh, unique. So that, that covers the uh, additional updates. Uh, we've got uh, to talk about the Codex of Power. Right, mm -hmm. so the Codex of Power is a system that has been in the game for since launch, and um, we, we're making a big update here where now all legendary aspects in the game will start appearing in the Codex of Power. Every single one. Previously, it was just a small subset, um, and I believe we even have some, some in-game footage that we can talk and uh, go through an example of what this looks like. Yeah, we'll jump over to yeah. uh, uh, We have behind Yeah, exactly, the Modem, who Ruben, cares? A.K.A. Bloodshed, former content creator, <laughs> now, now part of uh, uh, the, the Blizzard team here on Diablo. He's actually driving us through, through our build here, but he will be uh, driving through all our little demos that we have today. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so you can see in our inventory right now, we've got Edgemaster's Siege Bow. And this has a little icon on it in the upper right uh, in your inventory there. And that indicates that if you salvage this legendary, it will upgrade an aspect in the Codex of Power when you salvage it. That's wow, right. they no took Rax's idea. To extract aspects they took Rax's idea. Aspect crystals are no longer a thing in this new version of the Codex mm -hmm. of Power. Yeah, aspect they crystals are gone. It's just when you salvage the legendary, it will upgrade it. So we salvage it. We can see that Edgemaster's aspect has been upgraded in the Codex of Power. So we go to our Codex of Power, and let's go take a look. Um, so oh, we've got Edgemaster's wow. Aspect here uh, that skills deal up to 6% increased damage based on your available resource when cast. This is great. Uh, so that is the, the this uh, is so good. rank of the one that we just salvaged. Uh, now this says 6% here. Uh, In-game it was 12% because it was on a two-handed bow, and that, that doubles the range. Um, but you can That's see it's not so a minimum good. roll. Right now on, on uh, live Diablo 4, it's always just a minimum roll. And so once you find something better, a better aspect crystal, uh, the codex is kind Our of relevant. Our inventory space now is going to be so empty to be now. Relevant because every time you find a higher roll of it, it's going to upgrade your codex, and you can continually re-imprint this legendary power onto any gear that you <laughs> oh, find. Oh, and you going can favorite forward. them That's too. Right. So if Ruben finds a 10% roll you know, on mm -hmm. something else, then that is now going to, you can go ahead and salvage that item down. That's good. That 10% version is now going to replace the 6% version he has right yep. now. And that's the new version that you have. So when we're talking about upgrading, that's what really so, means like, they took Rax's idea. The versions of these aspects, that's a big they replace dub. the older ones. Now, every time you do a big dub. The of power, that's going to be the version that you get from that point. Now, forward. I'm not going to have so three tab spaces of freaking time, you just super lucky you items. You are super lucky, and you would have that forever. Yes, that is you so can good. Oh, my God, However, Diablo. The, uh, the ranks of legendaries, you won't be able to find a max roll of these legendaries in World Tiers 1 and 2 when you're just that's starting fine. out your journey. We have uh, extended the range, so a lot of legendaries That's used fine. to say, hypothetically, if a, if a legendary a rolled dub. between 20% and 30%, uh, now we've extended that range from 20 to 35%. Mm. But those like 30 to 35%, That's a huge the highest dub. range, the most powerful huge versions, dub. those are only going to be accessible in World Tier 4. That's in the huge. later game. So this does give you a bit more of progression. So you can find it early, and you can upgrade it. But then you're going to find even better versions as you progress. Yeah, that's fine. Tiers. I think the, the highest one should and, be in uh, three and four. And we actually, can we go back to the build really quickly? Because, yeah. uh, and, and uh, that's <laughs> so <laughs> good. Bring up that codex codex again. Power really quickly. <laughs> show the UI uh, yeah, a little bit here. Yeah. 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 Because one, one big thing is like, there. Uh, I know we blazed over this really quickly, but there are uh, filters, ways of searching through everything, mm -hmm. which is really nice. And then, yes. of course, on the icons as well, I think people are probably seeing these numbers associated. I know. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, something that, that is, is so changed good, obviously dude. with this new codex of power where oh it's my showcasing God, like that's hey so there's good. a gold written version of aspect of quickening fog right there mm -hmm. which is already showcasing hey you have it completely maxed at 16 out of 16 and of course there's dude, different right now i got three you're, you're spaces kind of like i got three of my throughout, tabs just uh, the, filled the with power right now different aspects yeah of like gear yeah, and power i really love that gold border to really indicate that hey you found the best version you've kind of completed oh my this God, and uh, so some of them good. you kind of cheat on it right things that only have one rank uh, yep. 
out. As soon as you unlock it, you get the best version. <laughs> yeah, that's an example of one that you could max out in World Tier 1. <laughs> you probably yeah. could, right? yeah. But most oh of them God. have now uh, up, you know, up to 16 so far, ranks this is kind of our standard. So far, this, in being able to trade uh, legendaries, you know, for the most part, huge dub. Um, and, and those huge highest ranks dub. are just going to be in the later World Tiers. And for a lot of these aspects, too, when we went to 16 ranks on these, we actually extended the, the value, the power of these, and potency of these aspects upwards. Yes. Right? We yes. didn't water it down. We actually extended it up. Yeah, for the most part, the, these have increased in power at the highest level, yeah. just to make them really rewarding in World Tier 4 when you find them. And I, I'm sure there's people asking specifically about, hey, is this a seasonal thing? Is this an eternal thing? Um, I, this like, is everywhere yes. forever. This, this is, this is great, the new man. world. This is the new this is a, world. This is, that's right. All the updates we're talking about today, Correct. once again, are for the eternal realm and for the seasonal realm. These are not season seasonal updates only. Yeah, yeah. They're coming with Season 4, yep. but they are applying to the whole game. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, hey, I'm that, just like, going to go ahead and go on the record and say, hey, course, Blizzard, go ahead and fire like, every your odd-numbered yeah. Diablo yeah. team yeah. and just let your even-numbered Diablo team do everything. fill it out. Eternally. Yeah. Yes. Just Eternally. fire them. Fire all them. All right, so Get rid of them. There's a ton on the systems that already exist in the game, right? The base item affixes, the other updates, and Codex of Power. But there's also new systems coming up. We're not done with organization. That was updates to existing things, but we have got a lot of new stuff. So let's talk about temper. Tempering. Tempering is a is new this? crafting system that will crafting. allow you to add really cool new affixes to your items. And so Which I really is why just want we to only have three that, instead that of four initially. This is not just taking those those old really conditional um, nitty gritty aspects uh, or affixes. This is this also includes a lot of really new exciting affixes as well that we'll we'll showcase a bit later. Things like a chance to cast bonus projectiles. Um, increased effect size uh, of your skills and, and other ways of talking directly to individual skills. Uh, a lot of this lives in tempering. And so this way you can like really customize that. your character, uh, you know, specifically to your build and the skills that you're using and the way you Add more play. arrows for multi-shot. So you might be asking, well, how do we temper? Uh, we've got uh, tempering manuals. So these are uh, items, uh, manuals that are going to drop from most content in the game. This isn't something you need to go target farm. You're just going to find these as you're playing. And these manuals are going to be a list of possible affixes that are kind of themed That's to individual what it builds. Like, so even. if you are a uh, bone necro, for instance, you know the the um, a, the manual for bone necro might have you know things specifically to bone spear and bone splinters and <coughs> bone spirit. Uh, when you do the tempering, uh, which is done at the blacksmith, it will attach a random one of the affixes from that manual onto the item that you're tempering. Uh, and if you don't get the exact one that you want or you don't get the roll that you want, you can re-roll these affixes up to the item's tempering durability. Now, this is a lot without an example, so I think we've got an example where we can just... Okay, uh, let's see. Or, this yeah, sounds like lost through, right? Like. Um, yeah. yeah, so here is uh, some screenshot examples of the actual recipes that appear. So on the left, we've got uh, the Manual of Natural Motion. This is a generic recipe that uh, really applies to any class. It's got a variety of movement speed options on it. So you've got, yes, uh, it is. you know, you might just attach movement speed to your gear. Maybe you get a higher value of movement speed, but only after you kill an elite. Um, okay. We, we have the option to uh, reduce your evade cooldown yeah, see, bone or spirit, give you mobility skill explosion cooldown size, reduction. We've chance tagged a lot spirit, of skills in the game with mobility to cast twice. Them, you know, things wow. like teleport or charge. Um, see, and then on the this right, is we've so got much one better because it allows you to be to more necromancers because this is the the bone creative. necro one that I mentioned before. So we've got a like chance for bone build like your projectiles build. to cast twice, chance for bone spear projectiles to cast twice, uh, increase the size of your bone spear explosion, That's very cool. or, or mm -hmm. increase the duration of your bone storm. So That's if you're a bone so necro, cool. one of these is probably going to be pretty relevant to you and and will be really uh, I like a cool this. way of you customizing your character and your skills. Uh, so here's an example of the UI. Ooh, okay, uh, so on the go. left, we've got you know the, this Choker of Ancestral Charge, one of my favorite legendaries, uh, currently on season three, um, and and so it's got you know the the relatively simpler as, uh, affixes. It's got just max life, damage, and critical strike chance. Wait, you and can the, add two? We blacksmith. We put it into the into the menu here. You can make it and five. And we can see that there are kind of six categories, uh, with five of them being highlighted. Uh, these categories are the categories of recipes. So each recipe corresponds to one of these categories. And um, on amulets, you can put anything except the weapons category. So that's why you know offensive, defensive, utility, mobility, and resource are all highlighted here. 
They have to, and, Ramiro. They have uh, once to. we go through this, uh, we, we can do this twice um, because uh, most items can only be uh, tempered once. You can get just one affix on them. But ancestral items, these really late game Ooh. world tier four items, can be tempered twice from two separate categories. That's so you can't so put, say, cool. two defensive ones on You're there. Gonna You're going to, to uh, diversify. So much. And in this case, we've got charge cooldown reduction added on the right. And we've also got some bonus damage while berserking. So we've got an offensive one here. And That's then we've got so good. Um, a utility one that, that gives us the, the cooldown reduction. Uh, do we have a, I love this. a, this a live is example great. of this of going through this actual flow so we can kind of show you what, what this ends up looking like? Yep. Once again, yep. No, right look, there. Look. <laughs> look. Oh, we can oh, see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Temporary. So in here, we've got uh, you know our, our bow of uh, branching volleys. We can put it in here. Because this oh, is a weapon, please we give can us attach, a thousand more arrows. Uh, ones from the offensive category. And so here's all the examples, you know, we've got five different recipes that we've unlocked here, depending oh, on how cool. we want to build our character. So if we want to do, this say, really marksman sweet. skills uh, to put on there, we can do marksman finesse. And this will give us either bonus marksman damage. Um, uh, why don't we just temper it and see, see what it looks like? So we get this, this flashy animation that comes in, and we get to see uh, oh, that's hey, we so added 29% cool, marksman damage. Yep. That's right? so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So not um, scripted, by the way. Definitely not scripted. So yeah, actually wasn't. But it actually was. <laughs> <laughs> so ancestral <laughs> items you have too. So say you can have four. Yeah. Uh, one stats, thing I want to call it also ancestral, you can have five. Is that like so we are in the season, oh. the season four update. Or this PTR update that we're talking about right now. This, this is, is so uh, good. This is our first PR, uh, PTR update. There's mm -hmm. a lot of changes we have going in. And there's some things are going to be in a, are kind of in the middle of being polished now, or yeah. kind of getting wrapped mm -hmm. up for some things in dev. There's going to be some things that players will see on the PTR. They're going to feel like, oh, this is like not quite like what I expect. Or there's like a, I wasn't expecting this things. kind of crafting yeah. right now. That's kind of now. nature of the honest. PTR experience. Yeah. We want you to report those, like Adam called out a little bit yeah. earlier, and that, get your feedback on the experience. Yeah, but, that that that's that's actually a, a really good reminder because I think a lot of people haven't experienced PTR, especially if you're like kind of new to Diablo and you do jump in. We PTRs believe, chat. We believe <laughs> that yeah. it is yeah. an early yeah. look and at polish. the build. Yeah, uh, so there yeah. will be bugs, pol polish things that won't be incorporated. So yes, provide feedback on all those things so that we can actually uh, hear those and make changes for those. But if we throw mm -hmm. back Correct. to Rude real quick, the thing I wanted to point out is like one. when the master, when changed. the uh, the tempering process went through, uh, so you got 28% for the uh, that marksman damage, but the item itself got a slightly different number. There's yeah. just a bug that we've identified that we're in the middle of fixing right now. Yeah. Right, that's so. just a display bug, but this, this is one of the things that you know <coughs> we're oh, working on, bug. we're aware of, and, and going to polish up because yeah. that's the nature of game development. Just for the right? eagle-eyed among the viewers. Yes. yes. Yeah, this is a thing. All right, so uh, a few other things to call out here. Uh, let's actually uh, close this menu and then take a look at um, take a look at what, when it's in there. We can talk about tempering durability a little bit. Um, so you can see when this is in here, we've got uh, tempered affixes one out of two because Johnny, this is an ancestral up? item. You can Thank temper you. it twice uh, from two different categories. So you're going right. to be able to get, put one weapon and one offensive on there. Um, and then there's this tempering durability remaining. So this is how many times you can re-roll the tempered affixes. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. The first ones that you attach does not uh, should not be consuming tempering durability. I think this one might have uh, one of those bugs where it, it did consume it. But so your re ultimately, this is going to be the number of times yeah, you can re-roll. Essentially, forging yeah. potential. Exactly. We're actually going to update the string. It's going to. I think it's going to literally. But you're be just re-rolling to get whatever affix you want. Yeah, okay. To make it really, really clear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is the kind of things that uh, we're we're actually working on, and we love your feedback. So the on first two that sure you put on right and really don't affect your durability. But works. then if you want to re-roll um, one so of we've those, then it takes your durability. Affix onto this. Let's take a look at some of the weapon ones that we can attach on. Uh, so here we've got ones that what the uh, hell? Not great. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. live build. Yeah, live, live build indeed. Live build. Um, well, so we can talk through what what would have happened yeah. there. Yeah. Right. So when you would uh, attach the the weapon category, those are often the ones that are the more um, I would say more interesting. Right. The bonus projectiles, the bonus effect size. Yeah, that was the, um, it was the weapon category that had a chance to create different like multiple bone splinters. Or yes. Get it fixed, bloodshed. Yeah. Yeah. Get it back up. Yeah, I want to see it. in the weapon category. So so there we would attach one get of those. The screen and maybe back we up. get a chance for rapid fire projectiles to fire an extra time. Uh, and then when we do that, you know, maybe, oh, we actually want to play a penetrating shot build, right? Or maybe rapid fire is not that great. We could consume one of the tempering durabilities to re-roll that and try to get that, that bonus rapid fire projectile so, ones that we want. At least so Crimson, it, so I you get five know. tempering, <laughs> and if you have an ancient, you can apply two. So you can put two powers on for free. 
and you still keep we're, we're your five tempering, everything, but yeah. then if you want to re-roll one of the two that you put on, it consumes the tempering each time until it's gone. So basically, you get seven chances to get the two powers that you want. With Dust Devils, which I know we'll talk maybe a little bit more about later. But there's but there's like opportunities like spawn like instead of spawning one Dust Devil, you'll spawn multiple Dust Devils. There's Dust Devil size. There's there's like there's a lot of this is really cool. Like there's a lot of really neat new and I love how basic it is. Other, it's um, great. Play styles. Mm -hmm. I think it's really yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really the goal of tempering is is customization and really cool new ways of building your character. That's right. not just plus damage. There is still some bonus damage as as you still need to in order to you know actually do damage. But there's a lot of ways you can customize your skills and and make it really your own. Now, right now, uh, you can temper legendary items. Correct. Oh. And uh, and and rare uh, and rare items, but you right. uh, you can't temper unique items. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Unique items, what kind of what you see is what you get, mm -hmm. right? They they drop still with yeah, the four right. affixes for the most part. Um, you, those are going to be unchanged. You mm -hmm. won't be able to temper onto them and with with tempering. Yeah, with tempering, right? And then we we show the tempering durability. No, you know, Crimson. As as so or, or, you know, if you put an attack. So the idea here is that like power when the onto your has, weapon, right? Uh, has, you know, it's and you have five tempering. You can re-roll the attack re power all of your options. five times. At the end of that process, you simply if you put can't an attack and on a item. marksman one on there, you can spend yeah. three yeah. re-rolling the attack, and then you can spend the other two like re-rolling the marksman. Does that make sense? You get five times to re-roll either one. Doesn't matter. Ensuring like you know, it's easier for you to reach those nine. That's only tempering items when you start to really deeply engage in features like this. If you want to re-roll like a base stat that's already on your gear, that can be the only one that's re-rolled. Those don't apply to temporary. Like, I need to find like 70 helmets. Does that make sense? I find a max roll cooldown reduction on mm -hmm. it, right? Like it's it, we're in a different place now in terms of how we're thinking about that. In addition to the crafting, uh, the uh, the trading changes that we've made as well, mm -hmm. I want to make it a little bit easier for you to find some of these things between it being a lot. Yeah, we need a better to, market to have drops that are relevant for you up here when you're doing various instead types of, of content. ten billion but gold for that, one egg. Uh, if you're playing with friends, there's opportunities for you to maybe trade some things around at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I think you make a really good point about finding really strong base items to build off of, and I think that goes Sweet. great into our next point where we talk about greater affixes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll explain when uh, I so greater after this. I'm going to record my video. Affixes that appear I'll explain in, it in the now. late game. They are more powerful versions of the normal affixes. So uh, they come at a 1.5x multiplier okay. on the affixes max roll. So like, well, affix might be like 50 to 100 of a stat. If it rolls greater, then you actually get 150 of that stat instead. Instead of the roll, it always comes in at max. So it comes in at that 150 mark. Okay. Um, these are really exciting drops when you get into the late game. They're going to be immediately obvious whenever they drop on the ground. They're going to have a little uh, change to, to the UI so you can see it right away and you know, hey, that one has greater affixes on it. And that's going to be ones that you're really going to want to pick up and make sure that you take a look at. And then you, you really want to build off of because they're some of the strongest affixes in the game. Uh, I think we've got an example here. Here we go. Um, uh, the, and one other note, these, as I mentioned, they're late game. They only appear on ancestral legendary items and ancestral uniques that are dropping in world tier four. That's exactly what it sounds like. I think we can like. zoom in on the uh, the, the top yeah. one here where we can see we've got a little, um, like some Roman numerals at the end of it, uh, two. That indicates oh. that this pair of gloves has two greater affixes on it. And when you actually go and pick it up, we can take a look at the tooltip of the, of the item itself. And we can see that intelligence here is highlighted. Oh and so is critical God. strike damage. Uh, and these are these roll up at the max roll, and I think we've got a comparison kind of between. Yeah, um, that's primal you know, ancient. A, a You're standard version. Right. So on the left is is a um, you know a non greater version of a dagger. You've got say seventy four dexterity, and maybe it rolled between seventy and eighty four. But on the right, we've got a greater version of dexterity, and that's going to always give you one hundred and twenty six, which Dude, is that's so one point five times the eighty four. Same well, with the critical strike damage down at the bottom. So if you find the dagger on the right, that's a really good one. I mean, that's, not only do see, you now get two these, these are the items that we can try to get. In between, that is a great base item to start building uh, through the tempering system on. Oh my uh, god. The thing we've got, uh, the next topic to talk about is masterworking. Here Master we go. Masterworking is a working. late game crafting system that we're going to use to upgrade the items. So once you kind of find a really good base item, uh, maybe it has some greater affixes on it. Um, and then you've tempered on the affixes that you want. You know, hey, you've found the, the exact affixes that are specific to your build that you've attached onto it. Now you're really pushing into the late game content. It's time to start masterworking. 
Okay. And Masterworking has 12 ranks uh, where you can upgrade the current affixes on your gear. So this isn't going to change any of the affixes like um, enchanting or like tempering does. This is just going to take the current ones and then upgrade them through 12 ranks. This is kind of like the old 12 gear upgrade, ranks right? of upgrading. Similar, yeah. Yes. However, both masterworking <clears throat> and tempering are replacing the old mm -hmm. gear upgrade system. Uh, that the previous system when you just kind of upgraded the item power and, and the values oh, went okay. up by a bit. Uh, these two systems replace that, okay, so and Master now you're going to be able to customize the them and master five upgrading systems systems significantly well. more powerful on the back Absolutely. end of this as well after these, we uh, see an these example, things are done. Yeah. Yeah. Item upgrade, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so the, the 12 ranks of masterworking, uh, as opposed to the five of the old system, uh, most of the ranks are going to increase all of your affixes on the gear by a small amount. But then okay. every four ranks, so rank four, eight, and 12, are going to upgrade a single affix by a large amount. Ooh. So here's an example. Uh, the ring on the left is rank two masterworking. You can see that right up there okay. by the item power. It says masterworking two out of 12. Right. Uh, let's focus in on, on like the, the ma maximum life Notice that these there. don't change. Uh, so on the left at rank two, you see we've got 880 bonus maximum life. And so we take it, uh, we masterwork it up to rank three, and then okay. that will upgrade that to 920 okay. maximum life. So a little bit of an improvement. It. But then once we hit rank four, we actually get a much larger increase in maximum life. So it goes these from 920 two didn't change, but all the way up to 1,120. While the other affixes on the gear stay static because they didn't roll randomly because uh, we're only hitting okay. one. Um, so four, to eight, Joe's 12, point so earlier about we still boosts. have some, some in development. Uh, this is in development content. It's not final, as the watermark says. Um, the tempered affixes at the bottom, the golem active cooldown reduction and the bone critical strike damage, those also would be being upgraded and are eligible to have this oh. uh, this larger bonus. Okay. Uh, but in this particular screenshot example, those numbers didn't change, okay. but they will change in the final. So and those do also get affected, yeah. yeah they, they, so you almost want to put these like on before the upgrading. Wow. Uh, but yeah, so I, as you go through it, you're going to get kind of three of these, wow. uh, these effects uh, at rank 4, 8, and 12. And they can all go on the same one. Uh, so if you get really, really lucky and you really needed a lot of maximum life, you know, you might get uh, just oh a ton of maximum dude. life every time that, that increases. Or it could be on one of your tempered affixes. You could get I'm tons of I'm loving this so far, chat. I don't know about that's you guys. the kind of build that you're looking for. This is so And once you awesome. fully uh, masterworked an item, you uh, if it didn't really pan out the way you wanted to, the, the random rolls didn't quite go your way, you are able to reset it and try it again, but it, you Ooh. will kind of lose all the materials that you've invested into it. But you can try that again. It doesn't completely that's so um, good. Block you out of it. Right. Mm. So once you've got like a really great pair of gloves or whatever that you've been you've been you've, you've tempered at this point, you've mm -hmm. enchanted to get exactly the affix you wanted. So you, like if you didn't get the you, boost, you, you can do it. You lose the, the, the resources, but you can do uh, it again. Then you take that item into. Assuming you got through all that process, it, you can take it into the masterworking feature, and then you can kind of keep going at it. Yeah. Yeah. And get the option. Absolutely. To get that's so to good. That way you don't chalk an item. Affixes you're looking for. Yeah. And and if you you do get that right, you find something that's got you know. Critical strike damage, and then you hit all three times on it, super upgraded. Uh, that's going to be like one of the best items in the game that yeah. probably that's no one so else good has that you can go back exactly and redo like it. that because yeah. you, you really needed to, to hit the right one every you time. You lose the resources, that's be but really you can go back and redo it. That, uh, is is going to be very memorable when you get all that coming together. I think we've got an example here to really highlight all of these systems taken together. So on before, wow. this was that boned one restoration that we talked about right at the beginning when we talked about paring down the affix list. To just Look more simple that. intelligence damage. This and is what damage. I'm talking about. And on the right, we can see it after it has been tempered. So we've got bone spear, yeah, or exactly. bone spirit damage. We've got chance for a bone splinter projectiles to cast twice. And then we can see uh, intelligence has been highlighted in blue. That means it's been it's had one of the upgrades for masterworking. And the damage stat on here has been upgraded twice. That's, That's why it's so yellow, good. Uh, when we got up to masterworking twelve. And you can see how we, we've see, taken guys, this progression, uh, this item progression. The, these kind of systems and, and on, is so how we could do an AOC. All the way up to Masterworking 12. You could push this up. is really kind of the pinnacle of what this crafting is amazing. in our new itemization world. This is great. So I think I want to highlight here is that, you know, the total, comp the total depth of what an item can do and the complexity, you know, you can still make an item do a lot of different things. But on that before side, you know, when you're looking for items that are dropping, that's all that you're going to parse through over there. It's just like three right, affixes, just those three things. I get the ones I want, and you can just do that very quickly. This is so good. Leslie, uh, what's and up? And parse through a lot of items that way. But you're going to be slowly, you know, introducing that complexity over time to your items as you upgrade and masterwork them. So you're going to be building the items that you really want to be using. I love this. 
Absolutely. In, in terms of like locking out on this, now, I think the it's, question it's, is, it's is how much is the like, cost going to be for upgrading not only your resources, but the gold? Upgrades to your affixes during the regular master working process. Yeah. And then there's three randomly selected 25% upgrades to the odds of one of those affixes. Mm-hmm. So if you're very, very fortunate and you manage to triple up on a, a particular stat, that's, uh, that's so a, good. You can do the math. It's a tremendous, tremendous upgrade. Right, seventy five percent stronger. Yeah, that's yeah. insane. And he's, yeah. if you want to go hard into one affix, you can go really <laughs> yeah. hard into you can go one. Go really affix, hard on CDR in this world, right? I'm like terrified. It's, oh yeah, yeah on CDR. Really imagine really imagine getting that on CDR, CDR, CDR three times, yeah. yes. or really hard on bonus projectiles. Oh my like god, cool yeah, yeah. you could have. Yeah. That's actually true. Yeah, it's gonna be really sweet. Yep, bone spears everywhere. Absolutely. See, this is what happens when you believe, chat. You might be asking. You stay faithful and you believe. What am I gonna do with all of these new items? Here we go. What are we gonna do with? all these okay this is a really good bridge so two things i want to call out one master working works on unique items correct master working works on unique really really cool affixes that can appear on unique items not the power of the uh, of the unique item but a lot of like the really specific uh, unique affixes those all benefit from the master working process as well Mm -hmm. which are really significant right uh so i think there's like there's something really really fun there uh, also, uh, you can make sure that uh, like when some of these unique items are dropping, they also can have greater affixes attached to them. So those same unique affixes that we're talking about, like that is huge. Like now, like now you get an extra like fifty percent value on top of that. Yeah. So like you get fifty percent uh, value on top of the unique item affix, and then on top of that, you masterwork it. It gets it can get really really bonkers. Holy so there's a really there's crap. a big chase now uniques in, uh, are going to be different. But, like even allowing for like player trading and everything else, there's just still like lots of really exciting stuff Dude. for players to find. Yeah, and uh, the other thing I, I I've seen a little bit of this in chat as well as like a lot of people are going like, hey, when when are we actually able to experience this? PTR. Uh, PTR. <laughs> well, first PTR, and Dude, the also PTR at the same is time, be nuts. this is something that. Uh, does start immediately with season four when yeah. it begins. Yes. This is all all the items. I gotta get the PTR that, off. All guys. the itemization changes will start with the start of season four because I know a lot of people were questioning because they're Dude, going like, "Well, we, we had so heard great Gauntlet so in the far. past, and then Gauntlet actually started mid-season." Uh, this the is so itemization awesome. changes, and all the changes you're hearing today will start oh, at the uh, right at the beginning of season four, which is on May 14th. PTR. Being on April Nobody cares second, about Dragon's so. Dogma, man. There's, there's it's over There's a couple other things I also want to say. It doesn't fit I got one, too. Oh, do you? Oh, no, you <laughs> go know. first. You go first. All right, Please. well, I'll clarify something because I know it's going to be a lot of questions that people have on greater affixes. Yes. Um, so greater affixes, the way that you get them is you can only get them from things that drop. So you're right. actually looking for okay. that moment when you kill the mob, kill the enemy, the loot drops. That's the exciting moment that we're targeting. Okay. Uh, enchanting is still going to exist. You can still enchant your affixes like normal on those three ones that drop. Uh, you cannot enchant into a greater affix. You can enchant out of a greater affix. So if you choose to, if you've got like oh, a okay. one greater affix item, you can enchant that greater affix to something else, but it won't change to another greater, and you can't change anything into a greater. It's all about yeah, that's killing good monsters, to know. finding that moment that is really exciting when the item drops, hey, seeing if that works for just you. Just fire so the odd, odd number team. Just works, fire them. kind of what we're going for. Yeah, so Hire more of the, the even drop, number team. The moment the of excitement, the moment of excitement that we're going for there. All right, yep. and then one thing I want to call it as well that we didn't talk about already, and that is that there are other, there's a lot of other changes that we haven't actually discussed here that you'll see <laughs> when you get to play in the PTR. Uh, but one of them I think is really cool is we actually add a bunch of other new baseline rare affixes that can appear on items yeah. that like players haven't seen before. Yes. You know, yeah. so oh, there's a, okay. as an example of a few of these, uh, we have like Fury per second. You know, can, I can appear on items, Fury which is per very, second. very exciting and very interesting for my for my barbarian transformative. friends. Transformative, yeah, yeah, it's very transformative. Like, pl- like there's there's a number of other ones, like 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 life per hit. You know, is now uh, mm-hmm. something that players can find as you're going through the experience. Life like, per hit, that's any good. One yeah, you, that you and also that are kind of cool, or and also ones that that are are cool and powerful that appear in different slots. So previously, weapons almost always had bonus damage of some sort. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've extended that, so a lot of weapons can now have resource cost reduction. They can have bonus attack really? speed and other things that increase your output through not just saying damage, damage. to a certain yeah. uh, way. Yeah. More what? interesting ways of increasing uh, your output. Yeah, very cool. That's bonus interesting. That's just the wow. most popular. <laughs> yeah. I'm terrified and it's so cool though. Dude, so far yeah, right now, itemization cool. is a huge Having bonus projectile dub. drop and then have that potentially be a greater affix. Itemization and crafting, and huge dub, dub right projectiles now. Yeah. And Legendary gets, item trading, yeah. huge um, dub I, right you now. I know we want to talk about some end game stuff that's coming to the game. I'm um, actually. I'm gonna, maybe we leave that for the end of of the stream. Because itself. now they're going to uh, talk right, to us right about what we, we can do with Q&A. all these items. Is there? A, uh, I'm going to ask production here. I'm going to pivot them. <laughs> Is there a way that we can jump to, to class changes coming? 
to mean that. Yeah, you know. hashtag oh, buff so barbarian. Kind of so like, <laughs> hashtag so buff yeah. barbarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll go through the end game stuff here um, because we we do have a lot of uh, uh, additional things that we still need to talk about that even pair with this itemization. Yeah. Uh, these itemization changes, but hashtag we'll, we'll buff jump barbarian. Into class changes really quickly. Sure, we'll we can go to mean that. So it's yeah. fine. Do it. Yeah. All right, big Take dubs so far. All right, big dubs. So, uh, are we ready to go? Yeah. Okay. So we've got kind of three big goals for class updates. We've got a lot going on. Uh, I'm going to try and breeze through a little quick in the interest of time. The first one is going through a very high volume of meaningful class updates. And what I mean by meaningful is, you know, not just moving numbers up and down on things that exist, but kind of either updating systems of how things interact at a systemic level Buffer or up. adding <laughs> things that are, are really, really powerful and are actually going to move the needle and, and change Nerf how you interact with the class or the skill or the legendary or whatever we're changing. <clears throat> Next one is making flat damage no, no, effects no, they're, more viable. They're saving so endgame for later. I'm talking about things like dust devils, they're saving it to um, the earthquakes, end. Good. dancing bolts, <laughs> all these things. I've been, you know, I talked a few campfire chats ago about how I wanted to make these things like a lot more viable and scale better, and uh, we're going to be making good on that in season four. Okay. I'm excited. We'll go into more some details, but yeah, that's one of the big things that's changing this season. Okay. Like that. And last but not least, opening up designs to be more generally useful. So kind of similar to item affixes, how you know you've got these like multi-conditional things. We're going through classes across the board and going and looking for ways that we can open up things. You know, so you're gonna find that things that were a little more restrictive, we're gonna try and make interact with more different pieces. So you know, okay. something may have only talked to core skills, now it can be any skill, things like that. Okay. Where we're trying to make okay. things less conditional so that you can mix and match things yes, uh, a please. lot more often. Less conditional. So, yeah, in addition to those three things, and those are our goals, I'm also going to be talking a little bit today about PTR balance and hardcore updates. And a uh, little uh, you know, PSA, everything that you Sorcerer see here right Supreme. now, the tuning is still in flux. We're going through the balancing process right now of these things. So any okay. exact numbers that you see of updates uh, is very much subject to change, not only before PTR, okay. but of course one of our goals for you Hashtag playing PTR is helping us with the tuning and balance because no, everything no, no. is buff be rogue, changing. Nerf, necromancer. So uh, yeah, expect things to change, buff but barbarian. that's kind of where we're at right now. Here we so go. Here we first, go. let's talk about uniques. Uh, so in season four, you're going to be getting double the normal amount of uniques added to the game. Uh, normally, every class gets one. Every class is going to be getting two this time. So again, okay. more content. Uh, we're also adding a new uber unique here, uh, Tyriel's Might. Uh, this is a defensive-oriented unique. Uh, it's going to be a chess oh, piece. You can the see the stats there. Uh, lots of resistance-oriented things and damage reduction. By the way, in this new world, damage reduction is going to be much harder to oh, come by. Cool. So it's actually a lot more special that it exists here. And the special power of this is that when you're at maximum life, so when you have you know the entire life That's bar full, so cool. uh, you're going to be shooting out projectiles very similar to the artillery shrine. <laughs> so you can see here kind of in action, you can see that sometimes he's attacking and it's not going off, and then as he heals up, you get those uh, bolts that's hitting him. That's so It's really, really cool. flashy and cool. I love it. So yeah, class updates. Like I mentioned before, we're really looking to move the needle on these. Um, we're, we are still going to be having a number of changes, quite a few of just things going up and down for tuning. Um, but we're also looking at updating some systems and designs. And I'm going to give you some examples. Now, everything I talk about here today, I'm giving you a small snippet of the things that we're doing, like one or two examples per class. But when you get the patch notes, you're going to see it's like a giant wall. There's, there's a lot of stuff that we're doing Yeah, Terriel's mic's back, dude. of the overall pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so sweet. So, some examples here. Uh, skill tag updates. So, we're not only doing this on the Sorceress, but on other classes as well, but th this is the one the example I want to give. Um, one love. of the pain points that Sorceress has always had is that they have kind of core skills and then mastery skills. Mastery skills are things like Firewall, uh, Meteor, things like that. And the mastery skills, you know, we're, we're always kind of second class to the core skills because we had a lot of things that scaled core skill damage, but not mastery skill damage. So, we've updated our skill tags and, and kind of change things around so that they make more sense. So you're going to see more skill tags added to things across the board. And the example here is that mastery Ooh. skills will also just have the, score, the core skill tag. They'll be considered both mastery and core skill. So all your core skill damage bonuses, interactions, all that stuff will just work now. That's so crazy. Uh, oh, oh, you yeah, something yeah just, uh, we also talk Minions, about like, mobility finally. skill tag added yes. to a lot of skills as well. Mm -hmm. And how Did that you interacts guys see with the that? tempering system. You have ways of getting mobility skill cooldown reduction that ties into the same yeah, concept. So, yeah, we're actually adding the mobility skill tag to all things across all classes that have mobility attached to them. Mm -hmm. So then they can interact with the itemization system yeah. and you'll have these things working in tandem together. That's a good point. I love Frozen Orb too, man. Yeah, so now some other examples. Frozen Orb on the Sorceress is getting a lot of love. 
Um, before, when you cast it, it would go an exact set distance and then blow up, but now it's going to go exactly where you point it at it to with your cursor. Oh, that's um, so, so you good. know you're not going to hit your life if you run into like a suppressor elite, for example. You can actually make it fire point blank or all the way across the screen. And I'll actually be showing some video of that as well later. We also have a new unique that we're going to have video of. That's really awesome. Okay, sweet. So Frozen Orc Sorceresses are going to be really happy this season. Yes! And next, Necromancer. Uh, I've been talking for a while about Necromancer minions and how we're going to make them better. We're delivering on that in Season 4. Okay. Uh, the first change is that they're going to inherit 100% of the player's stats. That's so crazy. So, you know, your crit chance, crit damage, all those things. Oh, they're just my going to inherit God, from that's you. So they're going to scale good. way better with you, the player. And this is not only going to apply to Necromancer minions, but all uh, minion types in our game, things like Druid Wolves, are also going to be inheriting this, and you're going to get a pretty big power. I don't know if Druid Wolves are going to um, be we're good, also but... looking. We took a look at, look, look, ah, took a look at the Book of the Dead, <laughs> and uh, basically revamped everything. Uh, all the upgrades, almost, are getting some type of either number or big functionality change, and I'm going to okay. be going through some examples there. All right. But it's just going to be a lot more punchy. Uh, we're not only looking for effectiveness here, like making things stronger, but uh, we also like the rule of cool, where you know the things that are awesome and look look cool and are visual are gonna you know stand out more, and so we're trying to do that as much as we can. So next, let's talk about game balance. So as I kind of alluded to earlier, you know the landscape of everything is changing pretty drastically, right? Itemization is going to be changing a lot of how player power works and how things work in the game. We've got a lot of class updates that are going to be changing how things are. Uh, you can expect a pretty big shakeup of like just how all the different classes and builds perform. Like, it's going to be a brave new world, really, here. Um, but, you know, normally we promised a while back that we're going to do lists of everything that's perceived as a nerf. Uh, I'm not going to be going through every single thing today. Okay. Um, you'll be able to see everything in the patch notes on the PTR, and that's mostly in the interest of time, just because there's so much change that's happening. But I am going to give you, you know, a snippet to make, to do good on that promise of kind of how the game is now, and some things that you can expect that are going to be lowered in power in the future. Okay, here we go. So, some examples here. Um, generally, no! uh, Tavolt's Will, uh, everyone's favorite pants, right? And not only is it really good because the effect is good, but also it's damage on pants, which makes it really, really good. Yeah, 40% uh, that damage amount is, is being reduced. Uh, same with Banished Lord's Talesman. Both of these uh, uniques are insanely powerful. Um, they're still going to be really good after this, but the damage is just being lowered so that other things can be competitive. Next, the Barbarian, uh, everybody's favorite charging class. Uh, first thing that we're doing is, many of you may not know this, but when we launched the game, we actually gave them 10% inherent damage reduction. Oh, wow. This was back when uh, melee classes in general and the Barbarian were having trouble in the early game. Um, our game balance has changed radically since then. What are they doing? We don't doing? feel like they really need this anymore. Um, and we don't They're want supposed to, have to be buffing the Barbarian. The I'm still anymore. trying to get to so four quadrillion damage. And even like I mentioned before, this is Charles bullshit. Was talking, damage reduction in general is going to be much more rare and special. You're not just going to find it on any uh, defensive stat. When you see it, it's going to be something that you're going to really value because it's hard to come by. And we also think Barbarians are still going to be really good in this regard in this regard because their skill tree has a lot of New it. Act, skills so like good. a challenging shout habit. So I think that they're going to be fine. There's a lot but of good changes, man. I'm making a video part. after this. Also, we're reducing the effectiveness of Charge, Hammer, the Ancients, and Unbridled Rage. Uh, all three of these things have been incredibly powerful. Some things like Unbridled Rage have kind of been stamping out competing things for a long time just because it's so good. Um, we're not, our goal here is not to remove New Axe, you can game. trade we're legendaries. not viable at all. They're, they're going to be reduced, but I still think they're going to be really powerful and effective. Two new and crafting next systems. Over to the sorcerer. Uh, we got a couple bug fixes here. Um, Primal we have agents. more bug fixes than this, but this is just some that I wanted to call out. Uh, the first one, we had one where the evade cooldown reduction affix was triggering off of unstable currents casts. And so what this basically went, meant was you equip those boosts to have evade cooldown reduction, and then you use unstable currents, and you had Bro. like infinite uptime on teleport evades, which made you just teleport around uh, forever. Uh, this has been fixed, so now it's only going to work with intentional casts now, as it was intended to. And the next one is uh, Isu's Ferocity. This is a key passive on the Sorcerer that used to apply its critical strike damage yeah, to all fine. damage types, but it was the yeah, fire yeah. key passive. I was wondering when now this was going to get apply fixed. apply fire damage as it was intended to. Well, again, it, this is needed to be fixed. But I didn't know that that stuff. was a bug, again, actually. Like, everything you know is basically going to change because of how many things are being updated in the game. So I wouldn't worry too much about any specific build. All right, so now let's get to the fun part, class updates. God, so I'm going to be going sucks, through though. all the different classes here and well, just showing like one to two examples that, of kind of the ideas of things that, that we're changing. Again, lots more but than I didn't what you're going to see, but kind of giving you an idea of what to expect in the direction that we're going here. 
So first we'll Here start we with the barbarians. So I like dust devils. I've been <laughs> like I've liked them for a long time, and not just things like dust devils, but all those types of extra affixes that spawn things. Um, so here's an example of Wind Slasher. This is a legendary that we updated. So it's the double swing legendary that spawns dust doubles. Before it was you would cast double swing twice and you like go in and out and in and out and every other time you'd make a dust double, right? Pretty cool. Okay. Um, we're updating this now so every single time that you, uh, that you uh, cast double swing it does a dust go. double. And instead of every other time spawning one, every other time spawns three. So now instead of going hit, then one, then hit, then one, it's one, then three, then one, then three, which means a lot That's more dust so devils. so much better. And I want to call it again, there's tempered affixes that give you chances to spawn additional <laughs> dust devils when you yes. spawn a dust devil. So. And affixes that talk to them directly in itemization with yeah. that mm -hmm. Like their size can go up, their yep. damage can go Dude, up. This like we is, oh my god, this season thing. four is I know I'm talking nuts. a lot about dust devils. There's <laughs> cool stuff for all <laughs> these of these of be insane. I a lot of dust devil built a bar for the whole season. It's the example I tell you. I didn't know the unstable. Like these thing things need to be cool, yeah. and all the, the ones like that thing. go across the I didn't classes. Know that. Yeah. But the Anyways, issue is the bar, so there's not just this, fixed. lots of other legendaries are like this. Druid, for example, a thing that has been long complained about to me <laughs> is that last rate isn't up to par to other things. So there last on the left sucks. is what you can see exists today, where the upgrades for last rate are, the first one is you heal for a little bit for every hit, and then it's doubled when you crit. And then the, the next upgrade is that it's initial strike crits and does a little bit more damage. We're just merging those together. So both of those combined is going to be your first lacerate upgrade. Okay. And now we added a second upgrade there where every time that lacerate crits, your all of your shape-shifting skills are going to deal more damage for 10 seconds up to 40%. Okay. So now we're adding a very strong, potent, multiplicative damage bonus right, Druid. buff after lacerate. Okay. So now, you know, lacerate, you know, it's going to give you invulnerability, life leech, crit, and then a potent damage buff for a while after you cast it. I like so then that. You can That's cool. reduction on it, you can keep that buff rolling and actually have like a build going on. Next, the Sorceress. So here, instead of just text, I'm actually gonna show Come you on. some videos. Come the on. first one is going to be Come showing on. that Frozen Orb change that we talked about. Here, That's so, so good. basically you can see here that where the person is targeting with their That's cursor so is where the Frozen Orb is going to explode. So now you can make it point blank, you can make it far away. Uh, you know, That's it's gonna so be wherever better. you go. And for you controller players, this is gonna interact just like other skills where it just goes to an enemy, and then if there's nothing nearby, it just goes a set distance before I can't up. wait to play Frozen Orb next season. Next, we're going to be talking about the unique. So, prefacing this unique a little bit before Here we, we show the video. Um, the basic idea is Conjurations are cool and Frozen Orb is cool. Mm. And what's going to happen with this unique is Frozen Orb is going to have a chance when it explodes to spawn Conjurations. And then any time that your Conjurations attack, they have a chance to throw Frozen Orbs at enemies. So now we're going to see this in action here. So it's called Fractured Winter Glass, and this video is just the person casting Frozen Orb with this unique. So at first it's like, okay, it's fine, you see a couple conjurations, right? But then as you go on, you can see that the Frozen Orbs are making more of them, and then the conjurations are also throwing out more Frozen Orbs. This is all just from pressing one button. This yeah. is all just from throwing <laughs> out frozen just, orbs. I've just been right clicking this whole time. Yeah, so it's like when, That's I, awesome. when I place a firewall and my firewall makes a meteor, and then my meteor <laughs> makes a firewall. Yes, but yeah, yeah. conjurations. But conjurations. Yeah, yeah. So Hydra <laughs> throwing frozen orbs. Firewall yeah, exactly. meteor sounds cool too. Yeah. Like that. Okay, Fair I got enough. an idea. Stay, stay focused. <laughs> but yeah, so this is an example of one of the cool uniques that we're adding to the game. Next, let's move on to the I don't know if I like that. So we're also updating some class mechanics and other things. Uh, Inner Sight has kind of uh, been eclipsed by other things in our game, right? When we first made Inner Sight, well, nothing you know, is better than combo points. It triggered off of trying to, this idea that you were going to target a single enemy, pick on that enemy, and build up this gauge, and then you have unlimited energy, and unlimited energy was supposed to be this really crazy, rare thing that was not you know, going to happen very often. Yeah. Uh, it turned out that's not really the case through itemization and other things. You can kind of solve resource uh, a lot well, easier nowadays. Well, nobody cares because combo yeah, points it's fun to better. do that, too. Yeah, that's and it's why. fun. We want people to do that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we have to update our other systems in accordance to that, which is kind of what we're doing here. So now, you don't only have to hit the marked enemy, but you can hit, you can charge up inner sight off of everything. So as you're blowing up waves of enemies, you still want to make sure you're hitting the one that's targeted, but now you'll get a little bit of gauge off of any enemy that you hit. And now in addition to that, the payoff is better. So not only are you going to get that unlimited energy still, but you're also going to get a 25% crit chance boost. So now you're going to be hitting harder when you are in inner sight mode. I mean, I like so that change, but it's just not better than combo too, points. Right? That's the problem. Energy. Like, are they nerfing combo Next, points? Next, Necromancer. So like I said, Book of the Dead is getting upgrades. I kind of picked one uh, slice from each part, from each minion type. So here you can see your Skeletal Reapers, the wind-up attacks now, can reduce your one of your active cooldowns Ooh, by a pretty good. chunky amount. Uh, three seconds is insane, but there will be a number that will make sense there. Maybe it is three. 
Um, next one for the mages, you know, one of their upgrades used to be that they made frozen enemies vulnerable, and now they just make everything vulnerable. So yeah, actually, if you want better. cold mages to solve vulnerable for you, you pretty much can, just with this upgrade. And last but not least, we have your iron golem. So iron golem, now that when you tell it to go somewhere and do that slam attack where it pounds the ground, it'll also pull in enemies, That's very similar cool. to corpse tendrils. So it's not as required, oh. you know, to put that on your bar, you have another way to kind of get hey. that effect. Uh, another thing bad. I didn't put on the slide that I want to call out with golems that I'll make No, Demon, happy. I'm starting sword. you uh, got to play something now, else. While you're CC'd or at any time, when you activate it, it's going to make both your golem and you unstoppable. Ooh, so now you have on. another source of unstoppable <laughs> on the Necromancer uh, for minion builds, which I think will make players really happy. Yeah, it's like buddy cop situation. Yeah, right. You're going and taking people out. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Demon, I'm going Frozen Orb. Build for sure. Yeah, yeah. So next, like I was saying before, flat damage attack Here we go. Uh, effects, dust levels, and, and earthquakes are going to be your friends now. So before, these legendaries did not scale very well. Nope, and what I mean by that is that the damage that they did was fixed. So if you got like a dust level or earthquake or whatever, you got that legendary at like level 25, the damage that it did was just a number, and that number didn't really go up with you or scale with you in a meaningful way. Now, okay. under the hood, all of these things are going to be scaling based off your weapon damage, which means that these things will scale with you as a player and be much more viable now. And I believe we can zoom in on this example I give. Okay. So this one is Dancing Bolts. I'm actually running this legendary right now, my Lightning Storm Druid. So you can see that, you know, it's the same legendary on each side. This is me just changing out my weapon while I have this legendary equipped. This is in season four, so you can see it doesn't oh, so amount to this, damage this on the left. Number you know, about changing. five thousand four hundred there. So this now, goes up based right, on I your get a weapon. New legendary. I didn't oh. change it. I didn't do anything except change my weapon, and that increased the damage that these dancing things are going cool. to do. So That's when you get cool. these legendary legendaries now, they're going to scale with you and do quite a bit more damage and be punchy as you go into the late game. This is in addition to like tempering and other things. I like that. Things, so, so as you're leveling up, it makes it worth it as well. And I, I, it's funny because there's there's some people that's I think that really didn't cool. Catch, maybe they didn't catch the first part of the itemization, but they're looking at this second legendary, mm -hmm. the new one, and they're going like, "Well, it's only got three stats or something." Uh, this is no, nah, you can end up getting five. Yeah, 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 that's when it drops, uh, not yeah. after you've done yeah, all yeah, your exactly. stuff. Exactly. There's yeah. a lot. There's a lot of uh, itemization I love the, the primal to, ancients to make, being back. Um, oh my god, you know, dude! The items feel more. Tom, what's up, dude? In season four. Uh, so the, I recommend watching the recording. Just yeah, so yeah, far, a lot of dubs right now. Or, or checking out our The blog. biggest so one is when they get to the end game. Yeah. That's, that's, that's right. we need that to hit. That needs to be a dub. All right, so next, last but not least is opening up designs. Like I talked about, one of our goals here, make things more generally useful, less restrictions. We can zoom in here. To, I have two examples. Okay. One is Azurath here on the left, a unique sword. So two things going on here. First, you can see before, it was that your core skills have a chance to freeze enemies and deal a bunch of damage to them. Okay. On the right, we've removed the core skill requirement, and now right. any of your skills can that's have a chance better. to freeze enemies. So this that's means better. you can use it on, yes, you know, that's like so charge much better. and other similar things like that, where, you know, maybe you want to make a build around something that's not a core skill to proc this. You totally can, or it's just going to proc more often, and you just play normally. Second thing you'll notice is on the left, it says barbarian only. Uh, we just removed that uh, restriction. So now any class that can use a sword can use Azure Wrath. Again, oh, that's we're just awesome. trying to look for places where there was restrictions, and when we can, we're just removing them. Next one is Opportunist. This one I'm really excited about on the Rogue. I think I'm going to play a Rogue this season. Mm -hmm. um, so on the left is the old version, where it says when you break stealth with an attack, you can drop stun grenades, right? And then those okay. grenades deal damage and stun enemies. On the right, we've removed a lot of these restrictions and made it more useful. So now it's when you enter or break stealth, and you don't need to break stealth when, it, when you attack. So anytime that you cast stealth or go into stealth, you're going to get two sets of these, and it's just going to be when you go in and out, and you just get stun grenades. That's interesting. Uh, you also notice that this is a tuning thing, but the stun duration on stun grenades has been buffed. It's a second now. And then we also did a thing that I'm really excited about here, where every single grenade, stun grenade uh, legendary will increase the damage of your grenade skills. And all of them are going to have this. So if you want to make a stun grenade build, if you collect, you know, the That's four or cool. five of these legendaries that, that kind of combo together, I every like one that. is going to incrementally increase your grenade's damage as well to a point where, you know, you, you'll, they'll be doing a lot more meaningful damage in your build. Yes, so many different builds. Let's go. All right, last but not least, we've got hardcore updates. So for you hardcore players, uh, Elixir of Death Evasion is being removed from the game. It's dying, and it's not coming back, just like you will in hardcore. Uh, <laughs> we've also redesigned yeah, the Cody, flame shield enchantment. So before, it used to be a cheat death mechanic, where when you took fatal damage, it would you know proc and save you. 
Now it's going to automatically activate when you uh, lose a certain amount of life, and then it has a, a, an internal cooldown on that. So we've heard from the community kind of loud and clear. They really want hardcore to be hardcore, and so we're going to deliver on that. Now you actually okay, have great. to be careful. The you know, sanctuary That's is a very awesome. scary place, and you won't have those fail safes to keep you alive anymore. Well, I don't know if it's going to murder other and, ARPGs, uh, King, but these are very feedback. good changes. So like we mentioned before, I'm we're so going to be excited about the feedback system. very carefully. Please let us know what you think. Uh, the class team is particularly excited about what's working for you and what's not working for you. Um, when you're looking, like, when you're we kind have, of tuning like, now your we feedback have so and much to, to us, do with all of uh, our really items. looking it's at things so like good. tuning and balance. We know that things are going to be like, pretty so many ways to make our character really into. our character. Um, we're also looking for what changes really made the game more fun to you. You're going to see a lot of them, I, a lot dude, more than what I presented. We're going to go all over we this. Really when I make the video, we're going to go all over this. But the mark and why, you know, maybe we didn't go far enough, or this thing could have been a way better with just a small tweak. And then last but not least, we want to know what would you like to see that didn't make it in, right? Um, we're forever going to be updating this game, and we really want to Forgotten know... Forgotten Souls is a big you know, one for me. A lot of these changes are coming from your feedback, like, you know, flat damage scaling, Unstoppable coming on the Golem for Necromancers. We've been wanting more sources of it. You know, what other things are you seeing that, you know, have always kind of bugged you or have always been kind of a pain point that you would like us to change? And we'll be looking for that feedback. So yeah, that's yeah, I just like it too. But Thanks everybody again, yes. In so the scope excited. of bigger things, there, there to make the game a, better. Like, of information for classes. I like it. It gives us more time to do feedback on the PTR, PTR and, and that, gives them more time to done. implement. No, no, no. no, 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 no oh, I'm sorry. It sucks, but think about it this way: more last apoc to play in Poe two. The next season of Poe, the next league, we'll be able to play more of that. He will be talking. Yo, Danny Daniels with the follow on Twitch. Thank you. Specific items. Sure, thanks. So, Here we go. Uh, a couple things I want to talk about first. We're going to talk about some new content stuff in just a minute, but there are some other things that are also changing at the same time. Uh, you'll see on the PTR, we've made an adjustment to, uh, to world tiers in that we've changed the XP modifier that you get for opting into certain world tiers. So, uh, I'm going to, so the reason why we're doing this, we want, we want to get players to end game a little bit faster. So we've made an adjustment where World Tier 2 now goes, instead of giving you 20% bonus XP, it gives you 50% bonus XP. Uh, World Tier 3 now gives you 150% uh, bonus XP, mm -hmm. as opposed to the 100% you got before. And then World Tier 4 gives you 250% bonus XP, instead of the 200% that you got before. So again, we want to get players into the space where they're, they're getting a chance to play with these new items, they're getting mm -hmm. a chance to see some of the new content we're going to be talking about in just a minute. Uh, and experience more of the end game and, uh, and have a yeah, little less... Yeah, but didn't they say uh, there was a boosting the, the thing that process, instantly go to 100 uh, for the like PTR? A, a lot longer as it, as it is today. So uh, this is this is our, our state intent. We want more players to be able to reach level 100. We want them to get more of these uh, these level 100, 9, I, 925 items. We want them to start seeing more greater affixes. We want them to engage in tempering and masterworking. We want them to see everything else the game has yeah. to offer. Uh, we want to make sure that we're removing some of the restrictions and making that possible. Oh, okay. Continuing to think about that as we move forward. That's this pretty just, good then. All of the things we're talking about today are just one more step on the journey of Diablo so that, those 4. those would be the natural We're going to continue, as increases. Adam already called out, That's really to make the game better based on feedback and just continue yeah. to add more cool stuff. So we're going to be able uh, to get to 100 faster. Be great for the game and that also that we're, we're hearing from our player base, our community, would be really, really great That's for awesome. the game experience. So uh, with that quick little thing out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the first major update we have planned uh, that you get a chance to see on PTR. Helltide. And that is we made a, a significant update to Helltide. Now, I, I think that everyone will remember that in Season 3, we made an adjustment to Helltide timing, where now they're basically up for 55 minutes out of every hour. There's a five-minute gap between each Helltide experience. You know, and we New think that that's great. Meter Players will get uh, better access to Forgotten Souls and, uh, and, and, other, and all the Higher gameplay density. there. But we also, like, looking back on Season the 2 Maiden. Uh, and... You know, the, uh, the the Blood Harvest regions where, uh, you know, the armies of Lord Oh, Zero my God, we're getting Blood Harvest back. As we all we're getting Blood Harvest back. Before last year and, you know, capturing people or and draining them of blood. Of uh, you know, that was, uh, we thought that was a really fun, frenetic, uh, like, social experience in the overworld. Like, it's just a, a blast kind of go through, kill vampires, save people, uh, and uh, and summon Bloodseekers as well along the way and getting good rewards as you go. It's It was just a, it was a fun experience. In Season 3, we had a different take on that idea with the, with the form of Arcane Tremors, where players can go and engage in a number of different like, small activities and traps, and, uh, and also going, uh, manage to, uh, to summon Heralds of Malthus in a group and go ahead and get more like Tuning Stones and more uh, uh, and, and, and Governing Stones, uh, and continue to like, just get more rewards uh, from that experience. And again, we thought that was pretty fun, right? 
-hmm. So we wanted to take some of these ideas back to Helltide, and I'll, I'll be, I'll be. Uh, actually, I think it might be even easier if we if we could just throw to Ruben potentially, who I think might actually. See, I like it when they just show us, Helltide man. Right it's just now. so much better. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Here Looks we like go. That's the case. So we wanted to take some of these ideas <laughs> back to Helltide. <laughs> Hello. Yes, you're being. You're gonna get destroyed. Uh, so, uh, so uh, yeah, we want to take some of these ideas back to Helltide and make sure that the, the our overworld, exciting, demonic invasion experience that players get to go the through. The monster here density is, is so much better. Just more fun to, uh, to to engage with. Was that yeah. just a giant hellworm belching a bunch of enemies at? Ruben? That was that was a giant hellworm <laughs> belching a bunch okay. of enemies up. So a, a bunch of things have changed. So one of the things that, let, me, let me let me dive in. So one of the, one of the things that we uh, that we we did is we add this new idea of a threat system. Now you'll see I the like eagle-eyed among you uh, can look to the left of the mini map. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, can look to the left <laughs> of the mini map, and you'll see a horizontal bar it's segmented in three pieces uh, next to that kind of like half-completed pentagram there. Uh, as the players are killing demons in Helltide areas, they are slowly growing their threat over the course of the experience. And as they do that, they're going to find like more uh, like ambushes. They're going to find more uh, creatures trying, uh, coming and trying to kill them as they uh, as they kind of like roll through the space. On top and of this, monster density, they're earning, they're gaining threat by doing anything. If they're opening tortured gifts, if they are killing like regular monsters and elites, you know they're they're always earning more threat for the things that they do. The the armies of hell are paying more attention. So as Ooh, the look, player look, is going to go through the process, map. they are going to feel, start feeling like more pressure as they go through the experience. Now, once the player has gotten towards the like the end of this, like they actually have, uh, you know, when the armies of hell have been fully alerted, you know, you'll hear a tone, which I, I think that uh, I think we might actually hear soon potentially. Well, I guess we'll have to see. But you'll you'll hear a tone alerting you to the uh, the fact that the armies of hell are basically coming for your blood, right? They're they're coming for you at this time. And what they, in that case, you're going to see that there's going to be a new creature type that's going to appear, uh, which we'll uh, be able to get to in just a second. Some of the other big changes that are happening in uh, Helltide alongside this, while we kind of wait for some of this stuff to happen, is uh, we're, we have reduced the, uh, the level requirement or the world tier requirement for Helltide. So you'll start to see them in, uh, in lower world tiers now. So they're, they're in oh, there a, it is. a great way for you to level up. Uh, okay, it looks like the forces of hell have been alerted. So now there's going to be like it's, it's going to be a little, a little, almost a little more of a holdout. More invasions and ambushes are going to start to occur at this time, you know, and uh, it's going to have a, a, a kind of cap off event towards the end. We'll talk about it as it arrives. But you can see right now that threat is draining while this uh, this uh, event is occurring. Oh. So you kind of like reached that maximum threshold. You know, the the the, 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 the minions of hell are coming for you. Uh, you are you know you're going to be um, you know kind of fighting pretty hard for this stuff. But it's a great way to get like X to a lot of elites. You know, once this bar is all is drained, once again, you can start building it up by, again, going out, doing more things inside the Helltide experience. Uh, you're going to get more opportunities for more cinders and more of these ambushes again as the uh, That's as, cool. as time goes on. Looks like we're getting towards the, uh, the end of this This now. helps, and then the, the monster density also oh, helps. Yeah. Should be getting a... This, uh, this Hellborn here. Yeah, this is, so a, yes. oh, this is the so, yes. This is now, a Hellborn uh, boss. One of the Hellborn has managed to appear. Uh, Hellborn are, are they're very much a, uh, a similar creature to some of the... Uh, the blood seekers that we've seen in the past, these are adventurers who have fallen to the, uh, to the, 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 the depravities of hell. They're now serving the, uh, their, his, their infernal masters. Uh, they have great drops, like they'll drop uh, like legendary equipment. He's struggling. Uh, and uh, they will also drop uh, summoning materials for Lord Zeer uh, moving mm -hmm. forward. So there's more ways ah. for you to get some of those mats. As you I like how he looks different. And that's actually one of the other things that we did as, uh, as part of uh, our, our general updates. Is we we kind of wanted to go through and do a pass and make it easier to find more of those those boss summoning materials, like from doing like different kinds of content. So while obviously you can go to Helltide, huge dub on Helltide, guys. Steel huge dub. And we we want to make sure that there's like if you find like a tre treasure goblin, there's a chance now that treasure goblin could drop a random boss summoning mm -hmm. material. Oh, you know, wow, when you go right. and you open bounty caches or uh, whisper caches at the end of a, uh, a, a bunch of whispers runs, like in that situation, you'll also get a chance to get a random boss summoning material. That's great. You know, and we find more opportunities. To That's good. Experience in like local events, like when you're going and just. Finding events and you manage to complete the mastery objective of an event now, there's a chance for you to get a uh, boss material That's there. That's great. You know, uh, even elites have a very, very low chance uh, to draw us uh, to draw. The elites are kind materials. of whatever, again, but all to make it just yeah. a little bit easier to kind of like gain access to these bosses as you're leveling up and playing, even if you're not. Yeah, I think they got the same back that everybody hates farming for Durial. I think else, that's what, right? what we got. Um, like, I think they got. So yeah, that's. I mean, those. I think those are going to be some pretty fun updates to the players. That's uh, obviously that's pretty not exciting. everything. Yeah. So we. Uh, <laughs> so another thing that we're doing as part of this is that we are adding a new. We're adding a new boss. A new uh, boss. Ooh. We're Ooh. adding uh, uh, and Daryl. So uh, you can now fight and uh, she is summonable by defeating uh, the beast in ice and, and Lord Zir. And she's got the same drop table as Duriel. 
So we want to make sure that players have a, a couple different ways to kind of gain access to these really, really powerful uniques that Duriel drops, but also for that shot at getting those uber uniques without always requiring players to go back to those same places. Yep. So between opening up the options of how you gain access to materials you can use to go farm uber uniques a little bit earlier, uh, to like now saying, hey, go do Nightmare Dungeons, go do some of this overworld content and Helltide content to gain access to Beast and Ice in Lord Zir, so you can go farm Enduriel there. Yeah, that is you true, because be like Beast really, and the really Ice and Lord Zir are, don't get, uh, and, like, farmed uh, and a lot is a really all. cool fight. I think we might actually have, like, a quick little yeah. shot of... Oh, here we go. Andariel. Here we go, on Dariel. You know, nowhere in Lover. Oh, my gosh, oh, she oh, looks wow. great! She's back. She's tough. You know, it's uh, it's it's gonna be. I want to say the fun. fight's been updated too. It's yeah, not oh, exactly she looks good. Before. Yeah, so. the uh, yeah, the designer's been very excited about this fight and very excited about Endariel for a while, bringing her back into the uh, into the equation. So yeah, she's gonna be a lot of fun to summon. Oh, that's yeah, so fun. cool. Yeah. Okay, uh, enough yeah. on Dari. Yeah. Enough well, on Crimson, Dari. that's why they yeah. added yeah. it to <laughs> Hell's Eyes, <laughs> and they also <laughs> added <laughs> okay, get stuff from stuff. everywhere. Uh, okay, but that's not even all the things that we're changing with regards to, to bosses. There's, mm. there's more stuff that we're doing as well. Um, so one of the things that we're going to be talking about in just a minute is, uh, is a new feature called the Pit. And inside the Pit, you can be able to, you're going to be earning Stygian Stones you'll be able to use to summon higher level versions of all of these bosses as you go Wait, deeper what? into the experience. So we think this is ex this is extremely exciting. It provides a uh, another way for players to be able to like, express their like their build strength and going and fighting these bosses. So you can fight uh, stronger versions, much much greater rewards. In fact, when you kill one of these new, very very powerful tormented versions of these bosses uh, out there, uh, they are going to give you a uh, they're going to give you one uh, resplendent spark the first time. Oh you kill my god! Any of them. Mm. So uh, of like the all the ones that you can summon, the first time you kill one of them, you're going to get a resplendent spark for you to use. In the future, now, and that is not all that we're doing. Obviously, oh, it's only the, the first time so you kill him, though. It's only the first and, time. Uh, well, I guess we'll. I guess we can talk about it. It's only the first time you yeah. kill him, though. So we've been getting a lot of feedback uh, from like our experience with uh, with the Avatar of Zir. You know, so uh, you know, that's what he said. That's what he two, said. We had this like really really difficult like dungeon dive. We were going against, against again forces of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Lord Zir uh, inside this uh, this uh, experience. Yeah, but that allows you to go go create kind of one guarantee. Well, that was a, create it was a pretty whatever fun you experience. need. Uh, we got a lot of really good information and feedback about how that really played out. Unless he meant that you get it every time. Unless he on, meant that. Uh, the I pick. doubt it though. I think it's and only one per boss. What it effectively boss. is is a way for players to go and. Um, like once players have have uh, managed to complete a, a tier forty five nightmare dungeon, which is filled with like level one hundred monsters, they're going to gain access to a quest that's going to like send them around the world looking for rune shards. And rune shards are just this new material that players will collect to open up uh, artificers rifts. And they drop mm. from elite creatures. They drop all over the Wait, place. Like it's pretty what? easy to find. You know the materials you'll need to start this process. Uh, and when you have a number of them, you can bring them back to this obelisk in Karagar. And kind of use that to like form a, uh, a your first pit run effectively, uh, and there there's hundreds of levels of this, and the monsters that you will begin fighting immediately are all like right. This at is level the one. abattoir of Zir. This is this a, is greater uh, rifts. Video of it or, or, in, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's see what we got. So you, this is greater ribbing, rifts. Like kind of near live, there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. We have the live play <laughs> with that awesome debug. Text, yeah. There it is. Yeah. 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 With the awesome debug text. Everybody, it's PTR. Look forward. And it's a, we're looking at talking about this is greater rifts. So okay. So we see here that uh, the movement's coming here. He's already done uh, the, the rift before. This is greater go rift. This, is, up this is the AOZ. One, uh, Artificer's rift. And just we'll see how this goes. So he's going to spend oh more Oh my god, dude, season this. four. That's going to open up right here in Kyrgar. I stayed faithful, um, Blizzard. I, Diablo, go. I stayed faithful. Stacking issue there, yeah. We're gonna have my faith was shaken many um, times. Okay, so that's that feedback, right? Uh, and you're going to dive into your first pit run. Now, uh, they're calling them pit each runs. Each pit experience is it's a, it's a randomized layout filled with random monsters. You know, uh, there's no nightmare affixes like what we have in, uh, or like afflictions like we have in, uh, in Nightmare Dungeons. Instead, uh, the players really like just pushing themselves up as, uh, against this timer as fast as they can. Yeah, I know, they haven't said anything about season so four yet. as you're going through this, you'll see it's very, very similar to a lot of the things that we did in the Avatar of Zir. You know, we want to make sure that this, this is, is greater a, a risk, quick, dude. punchy experience as you're playing and you're killing yes! monsters. You're not going to be getting any loot from the drops. Like, there's, like that stuff's not here to slow you down. You know, it's just about like pushing as hard as you can. Now, a couple of the major differences between what we've done in uh, the Artificer's Pit uh, relative to what we did in the Avatar of Zir is first, 
Uh, in in the Avatar of Zir, when Fuck that gauntlet. died uh, while going through the experience, they were Zach, ejected up? from the Avatar of Zir. Like their run was over uh, in the case of death. Here, uh, we want to allow for a little bit more, uh, a few more uh, problems to occur, a few more errors, you know, from the player as they're kind of going through. Uh, so that every time you, you die, what actually ends up happening is you add 30 seconds to your timer. Uh, okay. So you're, you, you're less and less likely to beat the timer. And that's important. At the end of the timer, you're not ejected from the pit. Like if you, if you don't actually manage to keep time with the timer, you just don't get the mastery objective completion. And the mastery is tied to masterworking materials that you'll be using to go oh, through the masterworking process. For your there items. you go. That's so how you get masterworking pit, materials. So there's a reason earlier, to do the these. the place you need to go in order to obtain the bulk majority of those masterworking materials. See, that makes sense. So while you can get to the end of the experience and you will get rewards Screw for the having gauntlet, the boss dude. The gauntlet by, the, sucks. Uh, by the end of a pit run if you don't manage to finish the, with the timer in mind, you won't get access to those materials. So why is this? So one of the things we recognize we th that we think is very unique to Diablo uh, and, and to SARPGs in general is that a lot of times players are making uh, like efficiency bets about how they choose to engage with content. Yep. They're deciding, okay, I... I can kill monsters of this level fairly easily and without much risk. How much further beyond this level can I push in order to maximize the rewards I'm getting from the, uh, from, uh, the runs that I'm doing? Yep. Uh, and while also uh, like maintaining good cadence and like managing my risk. Yep, and that's exactly. kind of like that, that fun sweet spot that we think works really, really well. You know, AOZ was meant to like tap into a little bit of this we went, but it was also Why AOZ was designed to be to an extraordinarily monsters? challenging piece of content from the get-go. Here, the pit starts in a somewhat more reasonable place. Like we understand that like you know tier uh like tier 45 nightmare dungeons are not you know uh the most challenging content in the entirety of the game as it goes up much higher than that and the pit does as well as the pit can go like well past uh tier 100 so you can be fighting level 200 monsters yeah because he's playing 50 rogue. monsters as you go deeper and deeper into the experience yeah. so okay it looks like uh ruben's making pretty good time going through this I think we saw earlier that Ruben I love actually this. Like jumped into I love it, dude. To move to a different area. Yep. Yeah. He, oh, he yeah. isn't yeah. using combo points. You can't finish the entire uh, pit yeah. run inside like that first that first area. Uh, you kind of are expected to like move on, but um, you also don't need to kill everything uh, in either of these uh, these areas either. There's a good amount of creatures in both spaces. Dude, you know, like, I cannot wait for season four. Making pretty good time here though. I need to take another yeah. week so off from to work. To find that level in the pit where you can go pretty efficiently and quickly, but where you're pushing hard so you can get better rewards. Right. right. Okay. So uh, Ruben did a great, great job, Ruben. Uh, so you managed to, you managed to do it. Okay. Let's <laughs> not get too excited. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. So now he's gonna go. He's gonna go and he's gonna fight. No, no. The, go uh, back. Go back. In just a moment. Mm -hmm. Now the the second thing that's different about the uh, the, the pit uh, that uh, that we new bosses. <laughs> right, you just huh? start to see it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, There's different from what we've done in uh, in AOZ in the past. I'm just kidding. It's is the same that boss. occasionally during a pit run, you're going to be confronted by another major boss or villain uh, that you've seen. Like you'll see their echo occasionally appear just for a moment. Oh, that's cool. To perform a big attack, a uh, big sweeping attack, and or that you're going to have to like avoid or deal with while you're dealing with the uh, the the boss you're already fighting. And this is happening throughout the duration of the pit as well. You know, and as you go deeper, you'll see this occasionally a little more frequently. Oh, yeah, time. absolutely. So these are just another complication, like another, another thing that you're going to be thinking about while you're playing and trying to, like, remember the sorts of patterns. Eventually, you'll fight. You'll, you'll see a couple of these <coughs> appearing as well. You know, so, like, you'll, you'll be dealing with that. Oh, it's kind of uh, like, like a preview kind of to the boss that you'll as fight. As you, as okay. You deeper and deeper into the pit. Yeah, I'll so, say oh. so, so it's kind of like Elias, for instance, like a, a, a shade of Elias. Kind yeah, of yeah. So you can come and, and, and do an attack. We got the stone. Attack in the middle a, sh of the a shade of Lilith can appear as well. A shade, yeah, 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 a shade yeah, of Lilith yeah, can yeah, also oh. appear, yeah. which is yeah. Yeah. These are These are definitely tough, like, tough things as you go deeper and deeper. And eventually, you might see a couple of them as well in combination. So okay, so here Ruben killed the boss. Got a number of different drops. There's a there's a bug in this in this version that we're looking at right now, where the items are dropping are not actually ancestral, but that's not the case when players will be playing on the PTR. The right, obviously they'll be ancestral. Rewards for killing the boss here at the end, and then after that, uh, when you open the chest, you're gonna see that there's a bunch of obdicite that popped out of it, which is a a master working material. You know, I think he got I think he got five. You know, from the uh, from the first from the pit so to be used as you go deeper in the pit. There's basically three tiers of master working materials that are going to be able okay. to earn through. So there's the uh, there's the obdicite, there's the inglith, and then there is the yeah the neath iron. Uh, so these are available as you go deeper and deeper into the pit experience. I think okay. obdicite right now is like like tiers one to twenty. You know, you'll be getting uh, like uh, amounts of obdicite. As you go from like 21 to 40, you get amounts of Inglith, and as you yeah. go to Neath Iron and beyond, mm -hmm. as you go into like you know uh, like 40 and beyond, 
you're starting seeing more and more neat dude iron. this is and these so things great. can also be like condensed down this to lower so level great. materials if you need them for resetting a masterwork item and starting at a, at a lower level so you don't yeah. have to go back to the low level no you, you can stay at the higher level you can stay at a higher level but, yeah. but to be clear if you want to get to that rank 12 masterwork they're really the best possible items you do need to be pushing deeper levels of the pit you yeah, can't just sure. continually farm level one you you want to push to that efficiency bet that you said yeah. push yourself to your limit mm -hmm. to get the most materials per hour and just you know really I'm glad they're that finally looking, to get the looking best at items. it from That's the, like so the yeah, mindset if you of the go player that process and like really get those really be the best items available for your build uh, you're going to want to go through the master working process, maybe even probably more than once, almost certainly more than See, once. See, and the pit has a reason to do it. The gauntlet has zero reason items. to do it right now. You know, so we think the pit's going to be, uh, it's a really fun experience. It is, uh, it's it's very extendable, so it goes it goes pretty deep for players. Dub on the pit. And again, Chat, as you're dub on the pit. getting these Stygian stones as you play, you know, like as you get deeper into the experience, you're going to get those, uh, you're going to you're gonna get the, uh, the ability to go fight those those level 200 tormented versions level of Level 200 bosses. versions. So like a level 200 uh, tormented version of Barshan, yep. you know, and so on and so forth. All of these uh, bosses have a, a, a higher chance to drop uh, uh, uber unique item as well. Okay. So now there's even more reason to want to go get some of these uh, these creatures on farm. I want to see the and clarification. They have, they have better drops. They have, a, they the have sparks. They more prolific in terms of the drops. They drop many, many more items uh, as you're going through this. D4 good. So there's, uh, these are going to be huge, so far. huge challenges for, uh, for players. These are all dubs right now. Again, just in season four. Yep. You know, so there's that's that's like the, the the current look of some of the things we're working on right now. I'm pretty yep. uh, sure he uh, said we're, one. We're per. very excited about. Yeah. So ton <laughs> on the on, on the content side. Right? Yeah. We. I mean, <laughs> we were were an hour and a half in of all the uh, content that we just walked through with with season four. Uh, and as you know, Adam had mentioned earlier. You know, we haven't even gone through all the class updates. You guys will actually see that. <laughs> There's a lot more. Uh, you guys will actually see that next week. Normally, we do have a blog and patch notes kind of available uh, like a day or two after a campfire chat. Uh, uh, not necessarily, Crimson. It's okay if we the give pit it to level you guys one is level 100 monsters. So whatever level huge. you can defeat, level and 100 we monsters. We actually need at. to make sure that we get all the information. So pit level in there. one you is level 100 monsters. Well before the PTR actually starts. And we will actually have uh, a, a blog kind of going through all the details of this actual campfire chat, as well as the giant list of patch notes for the PTR, yeah. which again will begin on April 2nd, run for a week uh, on PC Battle.net, and we'll have instructions of how to actually get into the PTR, download the clients and everything from that end as well. So I know uh, we always I am our really campfire excited about this season. A, a Q&A session. Yep. So yeah. we do want to make sure that we do a, a, a Q&A session right now. So if you guys have questions, please use Twitch yeah. chat. I can't imagine there's any questions. No. Q&A yeah. session. Oh, right. Right. I thought it was a perfect oh, explanation. Yeah, we did the ask earlier this questions. week on the forums if, you know, if anyone had any specific questions. And, and so we can actually tee up a question mm -hmm. while people are populating questions in uh, in chat. They always pick uh, the so dumbest we'll one. start off with one that we have here. From when the does this stuff uh, this get implemented? PD. Oh, uh, I don't know. In season seven, you moron. Current items after this rework, because obviously we're now changing a lot of things from yeah. our, our past yeah, items going into going to season yeah. four. Yeah, so all of the items that you currently have on your characters or on the Eternal Realm will be flagged as what are called legacy items. And this means that they are not able to interact with the new systems of tempering or masterworking. Uh, they, they'll continue to function as they are, uh, so that they're not going to break, they're not going to be re-rolled or changed in any way. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of say, hey, this was an item that, you know, yeah, crazy. In, you'll, in you'll still have to do Nightmare if you Dungeons engage with the new, to level uh, up systems your and, and find those great the pit affixes won't give you any and temper all that. the cool new affixes so, onto it. Uh, so and, and it's still going to have course, that you're going to need to go out and Like find Nightmare new Dungeons items. is yeah. for your glyphs, yeah. that's it. Um, there is a question from Toast and Pen, Eternal Realm, what's new? Uh, everything we just talked yeah. about. See, everything this is a dumbass question. Pen so. is this is what I mean. The Q&A section is just so realm. dumb. So, That's a dumbass question. This will start question. with season four. So if you are a person that just only plays on Eternal Realm and you have a character But think about there, it like this, Crimson. Like once you start to get your character leveled up, like you, dude, you can farm level 100 Nightmare Dungeons so fast. Jay Corsair 19, does the master working just increase the total range of the role or does it get you closer to a max role? So it increases the current value. So if you already had a max roll, it keeps on increasing. So as an example, you have oh, shit. Um, an affix that could have rolled between 50 and 100, and you had a value of 90. Every time you increase it, it's going to increase that 90 um, by, or let's say you, you had it at 100, uh, just to make the math easier, because <laughs> uh, quick math. Um, if it was already at 100, uh, the first mass working upgrade will take it to 105. Uh, even though the base roll so range good. was just up to 100, you can continue progressing past that. 
Uh, if you had it you know, down at 50, it would go from 50 up to 55, and, and so on. Hmm. Um, Arrow1357 just asked, like, what about season? Like, is, this, is there season stuff as well? We actually aren't talking yet about the, I knew it, man. Season item. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes, this is all part of the season and part of the eternal realm. But we do have, uh, there, there are some things that we haven't talked about regarding uh, season four that we will be talking about here yeah. uh, in the future. The bulk team of the, uh, the bulk effort for the team has really been spent on trying to ensure that this update. So, they're not going to really talk about season four all theme. Well, all inclusive. So we, like won't, when, we won't I've know the before theme. about, you know, the. Um, the season two updates where we talked about the okay, damage and the many, many yeah. changes we had to make to kind of like make that to kind of like. Get but here's the thing, though, Demon. We we expected that, right? You can see like the amount we of things the we did are kind of very subpar of because this update uh, and this overhaul kind of come out together is more important than isolation. a so fun a season four theme, together in my to opinion. Kind of like bring this update uh, and get over the finish line. So yeah, it's it's, it's a huge. huge uh, Blaze, will it be in the PTR? I don't know. We'll talk about later on. I would guess so. Yeah. Thorag the Warrior says, uh, can multiple affixes uh, increase per masterwork or only one affix per masterwork? Right, so when, when you're masterworking, most of the ranks will increase all of the affixes on the gear by a small amount. But when you hit those uh, thresholds, the rank yep. 4, four rank eight, 8, and rank 12, 12 a single random affix one. will get a much larger boost. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, because there's three, that happens three times on your journey from you know, rank uh, 1 to 12, uh, in theory, all three of those could land on the same affix if you get lucky, and then that one affix just to goes be honest, the roof. I don't care what the uh, season four theme is. Three different affixes. For instance, I want it to be um, very subpar because this is such an overhaul. There's uh, going to be so much to do. I could care less what the process. season four theme is. Um, so I, I've seen a lot of people actually mention this in chat, and I uh, Riker also just mentioned this in chat, mm -hmm. uh, sure. and they're asking, "Is it just me, or was the camera more zoomed out in the dev build?" Actually, oh, we didn't even talk about that. Actually, oh, wow. Uh, okay. Oh, they're ahead. zooming the camera out. In, in yeah. season four, the camera will be more zoomed out. Yes. And there will be an option. You can, you can, you can yeah. have what. Thank you, God, you have before, man. Or you can zoom it out a little. So yeah. yes. Yes. Zoom it out yeah, a little bit more. Setting. Yes. It starts at the current default. Correct. You know, which is what we have in Diablo Thank 4 today. Thank God, we did, man. We've been hearing the feedback. We did make a. Uh, we did make a move. Uh, Joe Shelley helped a lot with this actually. We did make a, everybody helped a lot with this. We yeah. did make a move to like pull the camera out a little bit further. Uh, that's part of like a near far sort of like situation. So it's, it's going to be available for you to see the Huge dub. Good eye. Yeah. Good eye. Good eye. Huge yeah. update. Yes, yes. Of course. Yes. Yeah. We, and we forgot to say that's another really good one to talk about. Yeah. 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 Um, that's a good dub. The, uh, Thanks, chat. <laughs> there are a lot of questions about loadouts. Um, <gasps> did you guys want to provide any comments on that? Yeah, so we are, we've talked about this before. We're very, very excited about bringing an, like an armory-like feature to Diablo 4. You know, we've been hearing the feedback since like the, since the, the gauntlet went up, uh, which we're very excited about. And uh, we see that there's an opportunity uh, here. We don't have anything to announce today. but we, Damn it. It is a thing the team has talked about, like the UI team is excited about. It's a thing we definitely want to move on at some point, but nothing to announce. Damn it. Um, that, that, that way I lost my track here. Uh, do you have any intention of reviewing... I'm sorry, this is from VIX311 or 3II. Uh, do you have any intention of reviewing class optimization? Examples like give more customization points or put Paragon... Uh, after a higher level than 50? So there's a yeah. number of things that we're we're talking about for mm. the future, things we are, we can't talk about today, you know, but you can imagine that like we're going to be having an expansion soon. We probably want to talk about some of that stuff then. You know, yeah. we, mm -hmm. there's things for us to be considering. A um, lot of people mentioning a loop filter. Yeah. Um, which I know, like, we, we had mentioned as well that we wanted to get through the, the itemization stuff, so... Sure, I can talk a little bit about that. Are they giving us a filter? The desire for a loot filter in, in the current version of Diablo 4 stems from the problems that we initially mentioned with we really do just flood you with items and it's like sifting sand, right? You, you need to look through all these items and uh, the, the one response is, hey, a loot filter could automate all this. Uh, we think in this new itemization world where we are simplifying it in a lot of the ways that we already discussed, reduced number of affixes, simpler affixes, uh, the item power, once you get to the late game, always dropping at the max, uh, will help to alleviate a lot of those concerns, and it will make parsing through the items a lot easier in this new uh, system. Okay, so no loot filter. Um, Lady Ava 2016 mentioned, or actually brings up something that I think we should uh, talk about, which is, would it be possible to toss a different icon on the map when uh, when uh, specific, like, uh, greater, greater affixes and things like that drop? 
Uh, are there any plans well, that's for that um, in, in regards to, to changing some of that around? We really want to get feedback from players as you go through the PTR experience. Even the uh, the thing that we showed, like the, the Roman numerals, you know, mm -hmm. on the... Yeah, uh, I mean, that's going to be kind of tough to see, the ground. but... Like, even that's going through a bit of revision before it yeah. actually re is released mm -hmm. as part of the uh, the, the 1.4 uh, release moment. So, like, that's going to get a little bit better. But, like, I think that it would be good to get feedback to see how these things Yeah, go. Crimson, you're and, probably uh, right. They probably want to see how we, we, we do respond want those moments to be exciting. To the new itemization you know, system before yeah. implementing a um, new filter. Brian C22, uh, you say higher the rifts, the better the items. Are we talking about the equivalent of primals? So the... And if people don't know, primals being a, a D3 specific item yeah. that was super powerful. So mm -hmm. as you go, we're, we're not changing the rate at which like greater affixes, for example, could appear on like iPower 925 items. And mm -hmm. we're not raising the uh, the iPower ceiling of items beyond 925 no, as you go deeper in the should. pit. Instead, it's more about like, as you go deeper in the pit, you're gonna get more legendary uh, like uh, uh, drops. Right, so that's exactly what they did in Diablo 3. Getting things that, uh, yeah. that have uh, like better greater uh, affix potential. Like once you hit you know, 90, so that's, that's, that's why GR90 is the cap. Like, like once you hit and 90, of course, the you get the most amount of legendary drops. Juice up all of your items. Uh, Drummer Boy had asked specifically, hey, can Primals you do sweet. groups with, uh, in the pit? Uh, yes, yes, you, you, you can, can party groups. in the pit, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, and then, oh let me see. Uh, we'll be seeing any like clan updates, social updates. This is another big question that a lot mm -hmm. of people are asking about from from within chat. Yeah, I would like to have some better clan stuff for us guys. So uh, we have been talking a lot internally on the team about social updates and things we want to talk about soon. Uh, but we we definitely hear the uh, the the desire from the players that we're they're looking for more ways to like kind of get into groups and to form parts with people online as opposed to just like talking in local chat or trade chat or trying to like reach out that way or just going to Discord or just going to external sources. So we do have thoughts on things we want to do to kind of help uh, that process along. Uh, but uh, nothing to announce for season four at this yeah. time. Yeah. Um, I know there's also um, there, there's some comments about like um, uh, the store, the shop, and things like that with related to items. There's actually I know um, last yeah, time we had a campfire sucks. chat, I had mentioned like, hey, our our team that that focuses on like the product team has been taking in a lot of feedback. Um, there's actually going to be some some changes here coming really soon that will be offering up uh, new uh, opportunities for people to use some of the platinum that they may have uh, uh, obtained in the the battle pass for some really cool looking. Uh, uh, sets and stuff that for or cosmetics for their character, and we're also, I believe, taking the um, the and retroactively changing that that portal pack. Yeah, and I, I think mm. it was actually locked per class. So you, if you were like a necromancer, you could only use one of the colors. That is changing uh, here in the future, where you'll be able to use it. That there's no discrimination amongst portal colors. So yeah, yeah right. it, it, you will yeah, be able exactly. to choose yeah, yeah. exactly what you want and. You know, the uh, I, I yeah, Mike, there's, there's a lot of stuff, man. I'm making a video after this, you that, can that watch my VOD after a lot of feedback. So, we'll, we'll, there's players a lot. Will be able to see more uh, related to that here, um, soon. We're still waiting on um, them to get to end game stuff. Let me see if I can get any more uh, questions. Castordiff says, Any PvP news, balance, new rewards? Nobody cares about PvP. Uh, nothing to announce on PvP right now. The focus PvP of sucks. this update has been predominantly on the core underpinnings of our like our SARPG experience, yeah. trying to make sure that it. Feels like there's a really exciting gear chase for players to pursue once Nobody they get to a certain level PvP. power. That we have done a lot, like what Charles talked about, like condensing down a lot of our affixes to make items just feel more engaging in general. Uh, going through all of our various classes, trying to open yep. up a lot of new build opportunities. So it's kind of like trying, like what we're really trying to do here is respond to a, a lot of the, the really, really big major feedback we've been hearing, honestly, since launch, yep. and try to like get a, a good, big, sizable update for players to go and engage with there. But we didn't spend time in features like PvP you know, and because and, and, that That's would distract us we're really trying it. to focus on at the time instead. These but, things yeah. are going to fundamentally change everything, though, like PvP as well. Like how, how, how you yeah. make yeah. a character, the builds you make, how you do everything fundamentally is going to change from this. Right. So this was the yeah, big thing we're trying to do, and all of our eyes were focused on that. That's right. Uh, Dristren asks, I know Uber Uniques cannot be tempered, but can they roll greater affixes, and can they be mastercrafted? Yes. Uh, on both accounts, uh, yes. uniques that is so can roll cool. rare affixes, just the same as uh, that is ancestral so legendaries. Cool. It doesn't need to be ancestral, so it's world tier four, same as before. Uh, same concept with uh, uber uniques, and even through the respondent spark, the crafting system, uh, there is a small chance that when you craft it, uh, it comes with an uber or sorry, the uber unique comes with a greater affix, even when you craft That's it, so just good. as if it would drop. That's correct. All right, I'm going to do one last question. This is from GGI 101. Will the aspect changes also apply to alternate characters? Do I need to level up my aspects on alternate characters, for example? No. 
Uh, aspects yes. are uh, partition bound. So which, mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is when, if you're playing a seasonal character and you want to play an alt on your on the seasonal realm, like that alt will also benefit from all the unlocks right. you've got. That's, see, that's a dumbass question, man. I do believe your first character. How there do you not know that? Hardcore playing Diablo, and like, not who hardcore. are these that's players? Correct. As well. yes, that's correct. Hardcore characters are kind of their own oh thing. Oh my god! Um, even on the seasonal realm. Yeah. Awesome. So. A lot of info delivered in this uh, this campfire. Yeah. If I have 100 million gold on my eternal character and I make another eternal, eternal character, do I still have the 100 million stuff, gold? Because obviously with season four, um, we have a PTR coming up for those that may have missed it. It will be oh on April God, 2nd dude. through What April are these like 9th. seven year olds playing uh, the game? And it'll be on PC Battle.net only. So players who uh, want to help test things out, provide feedback, Please do so. We'll be checking all our, you know, our social channels, Reddit, the forums. The forums will actually have a new separate PTR forum uh, <laughs> available there. This also Good does mean Lord, season dude. three like, is going to be extended because we want to make sure we. They've grab been playing all for almost four seasons and they don't um, understand this PTR that. and all the feedback from the community, and we have enough time to actually implement that for season four. So. Uh, season three is going to be extended to May. You know, 14th. What, I'm okay with season three uh, season getting four, extended course, because we'll I want to check out May POE as well. So, uh, and we'll be coming out with more information on uh, what season four is specifically, and all the details that we actually talked God, about. God, Diablo here is going to be so much will better. Be now. in a very extensive blog, <laughs> along with all the patch notes <laughs> of all the like small things, like the the class changes uh, that Adam actually wasn't it's able small. to get through. Yeah. Small, small. Yeah. small, yeah. Yeah. small. <laughs> Uh, uh, we'll be in those patch notes as well. Um, and we still actually do have uh, another update that will be coming out next week for Diablo 4. And this one has actually been long awaited uh, because this one does include um, some big quality features on the on the graphics side for uh, oh, okay. D4. Uh, and the we camera being zoomed out, we'll be so good. Um, as you guys know, ray tracing is coming to D4. Oh, ray uh, tracing. And that'll be hitting next week on March yeah. 26. I'm not a big um, fan so of ray tracing. people uh, will be able to Maybe if you've got if you've got a rig for it, you can totally uh, turn up all your your graphical settings, get ray tracing with D4, um, and we'll also be talking about no, how, Mike, uh, all these changes that I'm about to go to, over uh, again from this dev stream week. So will all be implemented in down, the PTR um, as well as at the start of season four. About. Again, next week we'll have all the information on blog. Right now and, we have no uh, information on what the season four um, theme is. We, thanks again. Yeah. Everyone, thanks yeah. again, Joe Shelley. Wow. He's also still in the room over here. <laughs> wow. Thanks, thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Uh, and uh, yeah, huge shout out to the community. Thank you guys again for all the wonderful feedback that you guys have been providing. Um, and we're really excited for you guys to jump into PTR, jump into all the season four itemization, class changes, and of course our new end game uh, changes as well. So uh, we will catch you soon. And uh, yeah, next week we'll see you with the, the blog and the patch notes. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Chat, how are we feeling? How are we feeling? Is that a big dub or what? All right, let's 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 go over our checklist real quick. Let's go over our checklist. What did we get? We got new endgame, right? We got new endgame. Right, we got new endgame. We got itemization. Uh, no gauntlet changes. Season 4 theme, no. PTR info, done. No free Ubers. Class balancing, we got. No buff. Better Uber grind, yes, we did get. We didn't get that. No armory. We did get chase items. And Codex of Power reworked. They listened to racks. That is crazy. That is nuts, man. We got almost everything on our, on our bingo board. Almost everything. How are we feeling, chat? Is that a dub or what? I want you guys to let me know real quick if it's a dub because we're going to make this video. Yeah, we... Dude, no. You 100% get a free Uber, guys. You get a free Uber. Because if you go defeat the strongest version, the torment version of each of the bosses, each one gives you a... A shard and then you can go craft whichever uber you want right because we got andy now duriel grigor varshan zur and beast in the ice i guess beast in the ice doesn't count but we got six right now i'm not crying in my beer <laughs> dude this these are such good changes okay big dubs everybody all right, let's go ahead and get this thing started. 
because I'm going to try to cover a lot and not go. I'm not going to like, I'm going to try to just touch on this stuff as best I can. What do you guys think? You get to craft or free Uber. We got crafting, master working. We got a brand new crafting system. We got a brand new end game boss. Like, we got greater rifts back. Super insane. Okay, let's go over this. Let's make this video. It's a big dub. Big dub, I think. Big dub, guys. Yeah, dude, absolutely, man. I mean, you should be taking it from other games, like inspiration and coming up with your own thing. Like, this crafting system and making these items is going to be huge. All right, let's get into this, man. Let's get into this. Let's start this up. Let's start this up. Let's do it. Well, guys, I think Diablo 4 might be saved. It might be saved. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the brand new video that we're going to be talking about. The dev stream just ended the campfire chat. We are going to be going over everything as quickly and as promptly as possible, but I believe the game has been saved. My faith has been shaked multiple times, and Season 4 is going to be insane. Now, I do want to start off this video just talking about a couple of things that are not in the video, so that way if you guys ask me down in the comments, uh, you already have your answer. One, we get no information about the Season 4 theme. Two, there is also nothing about the armory. We are not getting the armory. And three, and most important, which a lot of people are going to ask, we do not get a loot filter for reasons that I'll describe later in the video. So let's go ahead and jump right into this thing because we, boy, do we got a lot to talk about. So my personal opinion about all this while we're getting started is that everything that's in here, there's a few minor L's that I don't like. And they're just kind of like tidbits. But overall, this is a huge dub for the Diablo 4 devs in the game. I think this is a huge turnaround. I think a lot of players, including myself, felt that the Season 4 is going to be a huge turning point, whether the game just continues to decline or if it's going to be on the uprise leading into their um, expansion that they're going to be bringing in in a few months. So let's get into it. First of all, PTR. Everybody knows about the PTR. The PTR is going to be here. It is uh, April 2nd to the 9th, okay? So it's going to be for one week only. We're going to be able to go in and test absolutely everything that we're going to be talking about in this video. Also, with that, Season 3 has been extended, okay? Season 3 has been extended, all right? It's extended till the middle of May, okay? It's extended so that way we as the players can do the PTR and we can go in and offer our feedback so that way they can make changes and implement things uh, accordingly now with the ptr it is again going to be only for pc players on battle.net so if you do not play on battle.net in the pc you will not be able to do the ptr sorry console you need to throw that thing in the trash and to get a pc like a real gamer second in the ptr you will be able to get ways to get boosted up to get uh instantly to level 100 you'll get 100 million gold oobles and then you'll be able to get all these mounts, skill points, etc., for your characters. And you will be able to go through and just absolutely test everything. So I think this is great. This is similar to how they did things in Diablo 3, which is just fantastic. Okay. So uh, they explain a lot of things here. The overview of itemization. So they talk about base item updates, additionals, codexes, tampering, greater affixes, master working. We got an entire revamp of how itemization works. The items in the game and... I am so I'm more excited about this than anything because games like Last of Pock and Path of Exile, the crafting system is by far one of my favorite things to do. So we get that finally in Diablo. So they change a bunch of stuff here. Um, example of item changes, which we've talked about in the past. If you get an item that has like plus to lightning bolt, plus to flame shield, plus to frozen Nova, you don't get those items anymore, right? All that stuff has changed. Only sacred items will drop in world tier three and only ancestral items will drop in world tier four. This is something that I've been calling for for two seasons now. I don't understand why for the longest time I'm still getting sacred items inside of uh, see world tier four at level 100. It's absolutely ridiculous. So uh, let's move on with that. So to get into the base item changes, 
the way they explain it, it's very simple. So what they're doing is they're reducing the amount of affixes, not only in general that we're going to have in the game, but the amount that are going to be on your items. So for legendary items, your normal legendaries, you're going to go from four to three, which is shown here, right? Four and then three. And then on rare items, your yellow items, you're going to go from four to two. Now, don't freak out yet. We're going to be able to do a lot of crafting to increase those later. So um, in addition to the reduction here of the affixes, not only on there, but the overall, it's to make it a little bit more clearer when you're going through items and sniffing around, when you're like going through dungeons and stuff, trying to get items, right? This is much more clean to read is the way that they explain it. And it's easier just to go through and just be like, okay, I don't need that trash. Okay. Don't need it. Don't want it. Get it out of here. Okay. Now, uh, on top of that, we're going to go through to the next part. Um, the quantity over quality is what they're kind of talking about and having a journey. Now, when we talk about this, this is going to be the thing. Uh, so before same thing, we go through and we talk about those changes. All right. So in here, we're going to go through and just kind of talk about the additional updates. Legendary items drop from level 95 plus monsters are always 925 item. This is great. Uh, they talk about the gems being simpler, better, and have much longer crafting uh, tail. They didn't really go into too much of a description of this. I'm just going to assume that we're going to have more ranks to level these things up. And we're also going to be uh, uh, applying a change to them. So, for example, like the emerald is you deal additional crit strike damage to enemies that are vulnerable. Instead of it having a condition like they have to be vulnerable, you will be able to just have it be just critical strike damage. That's how they're changing those things, okay? So, uh, significantly reduced item drop rates, less time sorting, more time slaying. Item re-rolling is capped. They did not tell us what the cap is, all right? But it is capped. I'm going to guess it's somewhere around 10 million. DT, you're probably going to love that. Material removal and consolidation. This means that... All the different like berries and stuff that you get, it's all going to be consolidated under one um, material, which are going to be used to upgrade your uh, potions as you level, as well as craft your elixirs. Now, Forgotten Souls are going to be applied into Elite Drops as well as Whispers, which is great. We don't know what the numbers are, but uh, they will be dropped more because Forgotten Souls are one of the most sought after materials. Now, on top of a lot of these changes to the items okay to the items i do want to add something in here before we get into the next part and i want i want to say it very clear for those that are watching legendary items can be traded i repeat legendary items can be traded okay all of the legendary items can be traded now uniques and uber uniques cannot be traded but your legendary items can be traded. Now, just like how the trading system is now, when you get a base item like this in season four, where you have not done any crafting or re-rolling, that's how you're gonna be able to trade it. If you do any modifications to the item, you will no longer be able to trade it. That's it, okay? Trading, finally, this is gonna hopefully help the market um, for Diablo 4 much better instead of the, the horrible market we have now where you're spending 10 billion gold for one egg to go fight Duriel. Uh, now the market should be much better and hopefully just kind of level out a little bit with all of these items. Okay. So legendaries can be traded. Now the next huge dub that we have on here is the, uh, uh, where is this? This is the, uh, salvaging thing. Okay. So this is probably the next biggest thing at the blacksmith, okay? And this is where our Codex of Power is finally going to be leveled up. Shout out to Rax for the idea that he mentioned many, many moons ago, all right? Your inventory space in your stash and on your character is going to be absolutely free for whatever you want. Now, when you salvage an item in here, you're going to be able to increase and level up your Codex of Power, all right? We finally get that. It goes into here. So as an example, every single legendary power, not just the normal ones that they have, every single legendary power in the game is going to be in your codex and you're going to be able to level this up. An example here is that it's going to start at the bare minimum. So with edge masters, you're going to start at 5%. All right. You're going to start at 5% and it can go up to 20. All right. 
So this is a 6%. The example is shown is that if you find an edge master that is a 10% and then you salvage it, this edge masters will change to 10%. And then every time you, um, you know, imprint it onto a, an item, it'll always be 10%. And you can do this with edge masters until you get it perfect. And then it's perfect always. Huge, huge dub here. Also, there is a complete search filter here. So you can search through all of the legendary powers. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so big dub there on the Codex of Power. Crazy. We really, really needed this. Now, our crafting system is finally here. I was shocked when I heard this watching because I didn't expect any kind of serious crafting changes to come this season, but it makes sense with the itemization. So we have a new thing called tampering. Tampering is going to be just like in Last Epoch where you have your forging, right? Where you can forge things, okay? So the crafting system allows you to add cool new affixes and get tampering manuals, all right? So it drops from most content. You can't target farm it. And tampering attaches an affix from the manual and you can re-roll them. So I got a lot of questions while this was being explained. So I'm going to do my best to help everybody out. So we have brand new manuals, which are going to be added to the game. Okay. These manuals apply to all the different categories, weapon, mobility, defense, resource, etc. All right. Each of these is going to be, have four affixes on it, as you can see here. All right. So what happens is, is that you get an item like this choker of ancestral charge. Again, everybody who was worried about just having three affixes, no, you can end up having five. So what happens is, is that you have your item. You're going to put it into the blacksmith under the tampering. You're going to have two tampering affixes and tampering durability. People got confused with this. So under the amulet, you can add two tampering affixes to the amulet, which is what you see here from charge cooldown reduction, as well as damage while berserking. Okay. So ancestral items can only add two regulars can only add one. All right. Now, the way that tampering durability remaining works is similar to forging, okay? Like in Last Epoch. So essentially what happens with tampering durability is the durability or the number of times that you can re-roll these additional affixes that you added. So how it works is when you, when you add your first two, those are free. When you add two, those are free. The, the durability means that each time you go to re-roll past that, it's going to uh, consume one of your tampered durabilities until you run out. So it's just essentially you have seven opportunities to get the exact affixes that you want. However, if we can skip forward here a little bit to the example, what you're going to see is that while he's doing this on here and he's adding the marksman, the offensive skill, one of the four affixes is going to be added randomly. So you can only get one. Okay. So out of the four for marksman, he got marksman damage. Okay. Now, if you didn't want marksman damage, you're going to have to go back into marksman and then re-roll it again. All right. So you would re-roll it again. And I want something else. I want marksman crit, for example. Right. So you're going to have seven opportunities to get the two additional, excuse me, two additional affixes on your weapon that you want. Okay. So this is huge. This is amazing tampering. Fantastic for forging. You're really going to be able to customize your items the way you want, but don't Hey, hold on. It gets better. Okay. It gets better. So in addition to tampering, which I think is just absolutely fantastic. Okay. There is going to be greater affixes and a 1.5 multiplier on affixes that are rolled. Okay. It's going to make drops a little bit more exciting as an example. To me, this is literally Primal Ancients from Diablo 3. As you can see here that these little highlighted images and see how it has, we're going to get a zoom in in a second. These are 150% multiplier on the damage itself. The item, as you can see here, looks a little different, right? It's got a little more shine, but we have the Roman numerals here, meaning that this item that dropped has two perfect stats. Now, out of your three stats that, that are dropped on an item, it's going to be two at random, but you will know that this is essentially like a primal ancient where the two stats are 100% perfect 
as you can see right here. These are 150% perfect. So the randomization, it could have been Chris Strike Damage plus Lucky Hit, but it is completely random, which is fantastic. As you can see here, right? It can be completely random to whatever it is, which I think is great. Now, let's talk about master working because this is this is great. So our old crafting system where you would upgrade something five times is being replaced. It's being replaced by master working. So now you're going to be able to upgrade an item 12 times, okay? So just so there's no confusion, we're going to look at these. So you can upgrade an item 12 times, which is fantastic. On every fourth upgrade one of your stats is going to get a huge increase, but the other two or other stats are going to all stay the same. So as an example, you can see that at level two, here's your stats at level three, your stats went up just a little bit, right? And then at level four, you can see that maximum life got a huge boost. And then all of the other stats stayed the same. So this can happen at rank four, rank eight, and then your last rank at rank 12. The catch to this is, is that at each of those major upgrades, it can be the same stat that gets upgraded. Again, this is all at random. This also includes not only your normal three stats, but it also includes the other ones that you put on with the brand new crafting system. I know that this is a display. They already said that this was, you know, was a bug. It, it, these are supposed to be upgraded as you go. So even the additional ones that you add will also be upgraded, okay? Now, an awesome part to this is that this system of upgrading something 12 times, if you don't like the big bonuses that are added to particular stats and you want to say you want to get that crit chance really high, you can restart this entire 12 system upgrade of master working. However, you just lose the resources that you put into it while you were leveling. You can restart it as many times as you need to to try to get the perfect weapon. You're just gonna be spending whatever the resource cost is. We don't know how much that is at this time, but I love the fact that like, if I wanna get as much vulnerable damage as possible, I wanna try to hit and upgrade that at rank four, eight, and 12, you can do that. I think it's fantastic. Okay, so. Let's keep going. This is a before item, and this is a final item after all of the crafting, after finding a primal ancient item, etc. Okay, so you can see how a base item would drop, and then all of the different changes that you can make to it. You can add your different powers on here, like chance for bone splinters, projectiles to cast twice, which is crazy. Bone spear damage is increased. These have been increased by 150% because they're primal ancient. And with the master working, you can make these even higher. But wait, itemization gets even better. There's one more thing to add to this, which I think is absolutely fantastic. The way that they explain this is um, the progression of leveling up your items as you continue to level. So an example of this, if I can find it here, if we can find it, flat damage increases. So... As you find a weapon, as an example, with the lightning, let me, will it zoom up? Do they do a zoom up? Yes. So this is really important as you're leveling up. I know where the video is getting long, but I wanted to go over everything as much as I can. So normally when you get a power, you have a range, as you can see here, from 48 to 55, right? And in the current state, that just stays the same. However, this is the same exact item in the new season four. And you can see that the item is actually stronger. How did that happen? The power number will increase based on when you swap out your weapons. When you swap out your weaker weapon to a stronger weapon, this power number will increase, which is fantastic. The, the way as it was explained is that when you find an item like this or a power and you're using it for your build, as you continue to level up or your journey of leveling up, the more or the stronger that you get with the weapons and things that you increase, the stronger that this power can become, which is fantastic. Huge dub there. Okay. So now we got master working done. Let's go into a few other changes. They have a lot of season class balancing changes, 
We're going to talk about the majority of those when the patch notes officially get released. Okay, but they did show some brand new um, uniques, which is like Tyrael's Might. It's finally back, and you got you guys get to see it here. When you're at full life, you get the barrage that just gets fired off. So Tyrael's Might is back. It's absolutely awesome there. Okay, so meaningful class updates. So they're changing a lot of stuff here. Necromancers are getting a huge buff. The minions will inherit 100% of the player's stats, which is crazy. Frozen Orb is getting a lot of love and mastery uh, skills, our core skills, and vice versa for sorcerers. This is great. Um, class updates for Barbarian, they changed some things. This is a really good example here. The old one was casting double swing twice within two seconds create. So instead of going one, two, um, dust devil now they change this to every time you cast swing you get a dust devil and then casting it twice in two seconds gives you three so basically if you go one one devil now it's one one debt three devils you know what i mean so it makes it a lot stronger druid's got some buffs here with prime last rate much stronger um the winterless glass or the winter glass amulet for the sork is giving frozen orb a huge boost where Every time you cast Frozen Orb, you have a chance to spawn a random conjuration, which also has a chance to spawn a Frozen Orb, which is actually kind of cool. So Frozen Orb itself can just cast conjurations, which in turn can cast more Frozen Orbs. Inner Sight is getting a complete rework. We'll talk about that more later. Um, Necromancer minions are getting a change. Reaper is going to reduce cooldowns. Cold Mages are applying vulnerable damage as opposed to applying vulnerable to just frozen enemies and then iron golem slam will pull everybody in it's absolutely fantastic big changes here uh the flat damage effects which i just talked about the before and after to a lot of these ancestrals is great so they changed and we are removing a lot of conditional effects so before it was your core skills now core skills is no longer there also barbarian only now any class that can use this sword can absolutely use this so it's making items remove conditional effects which make them weaker in some cases and allowing more classes to use these items all right we got the stealth grenade same thing here they changed some stuff um hardcore there they are removing the elixir of death evasion from the game so for hardcore players have fun dying and then we get into some helltide updates which is the last thing in today's video i'm just kidding there's a lot more end game stuff so helltide updates there's a higher density, there's a threat meter that gets built up, and there's a lot of ambushes and new content. So as an example, when they're going through, you can see here on the Helltide, this is Bloodshed, shout out to Bloodshed. The brand new things are you have this meter here. As it fills up, you, it fills up from doing absolutely everything. Killing monsters, opening chests, doing events inside the Helltide, and the monster density is much higher, which is amazing. This can also start at World Tiers 1 and two world tier one and two can use these now when your meter fills up okay when your meter fills up you're going to hear a sound and then monsters are going to spawn so when this fills up you're going to hear a big sound ka -ching, and then all of the monsters will be just spawning on you as you can see in the video and this happens as the bar is draining and it will continue to happen until your bar is at zero, and then you'll start the cycle all over again. In addition, there is additional bosses, which I think are really, really cool that can spawn. Let me see if we can find it. Where is it? There's another boss that spawns, which is great. And right here, the new brand new uh, Hellborns that can spawn here. This is the brand new one of the brand new bosses to the Helltides, which are really, really strong and drop high level loot. So Helltide's got a massive, massive buff. The next thing, boss ladder updates. And again, I want to listen to this for the video just so people can see it. But Andy is back. And Dariel is back. And then summoning parts can be dropped from virtually everything. Base to kind of gain okay. access to these really, really powerful unique Now, I want to say that the way it, you can go back and listen to the video, but the way it was said was is that with Andy Ops, being here now, which is that shot at getting those Uber uniques without yeah. always requiring players to go back to those same places. Content, so Helltide content. On Dariel or Andy will have the same boss drop loot table as Duriel, meaning that it can drop all the same Uber uniques from on Dariel to get the parts. You have to farm beast in the ice and in ice. And so Lord. now you'll be able to see what Andy looks like. Let me skip ahead. Andy is here. 
super awesome that she's back and you're going to be able to fight her. I'm very much looking forward to this boss fight. Um, in addition, uh, in addition, greater rifts are back in the end game. Okay. Greater rifts are back. Okay. Greater rifts are here under the artificer obelisk. Now, in order to access the greater rifts, or they're calling them pits, you have to complete a level 34 nightmare dungeon, which will drop items to unlock the pit. Then once the pit is unlocked, you're going to be able to go in here and do the pit. It literally works the same exact way as a greater rift from Diablo 3. So this is kind of what the AOZ is going to be. Starting at level 1, the monsters will start at level 100, and you're going to be able to climb, 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 climb. The higher that you climb, the better rewards that you get. And what do I mean by that? So not only are you going to be getting, you know, perfect 925 item power gear, the amount of items that drop will increase the deeper you go into the pit. This is the same thing that happened in Diablo 3 with greater rifts. That's why GR90 is like the pinnacle because at GR90, you were capped at, what was it? 15 items, I believe. So 15 legendaries will drop. So at, we don't know what the cap is or if there's one in the pit, but the deeper that you go, the more legendary items will drop at the end. As you can see here, we're going to go into the pit. Let me go all, let's get down to the end here. You can see that there's the boss. He's going to kill the boss, which is really, really cool. Uh, if I can skip ahead just a little bit more and you can see that there's one, two, three, four, five items at level one. And then you're going to be able to get a chest, which is going to drop some more items, but the stagnant stone, we have one more thing to talk about, which I think everybody is going to love. I probably should put it at the beginning of the video. So once you open the mystery chest here, the mystery chest, if he'll pop it really quick, I don't want to skip too far ahead. Uh, yep. The mystery. Okay. So it's going to drop these items, which we're going to see right here in the, um, materials tab. So these items that you can see right here, these items, uh, I'm not even going to pronounce this, but these three items here are the items that you are going to get as you progress deeper into the pit. Now, well, what are you going to do with these items? Okay. So these items are going to be used to, um, change and modify or use the master masterwork station at the blacksmith which customizes your uh items right so the deeper that you go the higher level of these that you get there's only three so the higher level that you go the more that you get to be able to to customize but the stag the stagnant stone i said that wrong this stone is probably one of the biggest reasons that you're doing the pit the pit is designed to drop these stones. This is the reason that you're going to do them because this stone is going to allow you to go fight level 200 uber variants of our bosses. Okay, so Andy, Duriel, um, Varshan, right? All of these bosses are going to be able to be fought at level 200, they are a torment version. Why is that important and why is that cool? So you get those stones from defeating the bosses in the pit. Then you can go fight each of these bosses. The very first time, unless they change it, the very first time you defeat these tormented versions of the bosses, it's going to drop you one spark. You're going to get one spark. So once you defeat all five, you're going to be able to go craft any uber unique that you want this only applies to the very first time that you fight the boss so you'll be finally be able to craft anything that you want the only thing that we don't know which i'm assuming is not the case is that when you make a brand new character an alt character because that character has not defeated that said boss at the uber variant you'll be able to get a spark again so even on adult or alternate characters you should be able to end up crafting any and all uber uniques that you're going to want so this is absolutely fantastic okay so there hasn't been anything with uber lilith but you're going to be able to do this all in the end game i mean this is just an absolute dub so the stagnant stones start dropping within the pit these stones are used to summon level 200 versions of each boss on the ladder 
and then we're making it easier easier to acquire boss ladder materials which means that every time you turn into whisper anytime you complete it kill a boss anytime you kill an elite there's a chance for any ladder boss material to drop in the game which is just so much better uh, now, again, the stones are used to fight the level 200 versions of each boss on the ladder, which means that it's Duriel, Grigor, Varshan, Xur, and uh, Beast in the Ice. So those are the five bosses to where you get the, the uber versions, and you'll be able to get those stones to make whatever uber unique that you want. Then they get into some Q&A, and that is about it, guys. So all in all... I am very, very excited. All of this was an absolute dub in my opinion. Oh, a couple more things really fast. The camera zoom at, that you saw in the gameplay here, it is a little bit zoomed back, isn't it? That is going to be an option in season four. And again, all of this is for not only season four, the PTR, but as well as the eternal realm for all you non-season players, which still don't make any sense to me, but... You can finally zoom the camera back. And also, additionally, if you want to be up close like we have been, you have that option as well. But for me personally, I'm going to be zooming that thing out. It's going to be an absolute blast. But that's going to do it for today's video, guys. I didn't want it to last too long. I wanted to go over everything as much as I can. I hope this has helped you and answered any questions. But if you do have some, make sure to comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'll link the video down below. Make sure to let me know. Everything that you think, if this was a dub, an L, please let me know, guys. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in Season 4. Let's go. Later. Ba-bam. Ba-bam. New axe. Did you get all that new axe? Did you get it all? Did you get it all, new axe? I hope so. There's a lot of good stuff, man. Mm -hmm. There's more ways ah. for you to get some of those mats as you go through the experience. And that's actually one of the other things that we did as, this will uh, be as fun part for two of weeks. Uh, our general updates. No, we, not we at all, man. We kind of to go through and do a pass and make it easier to find more of those. Not with the packs. crafting system. No way. Also, new axe. Dude, I got to swap off. And, oh, and demon as well. I got to swap off multi-shot, man. On further, further research... Yeah, the, the attack speed on multi-shot has been completely nerfed. So I'm doing a bow mage with detonating uh, traps. Yeah, with, with, with explosive trap and detonating arrow. Yeah. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Yeah, the, the attack speed is just too slow. So, yeah. I will be doing... I'm not going to do the main trap one with the daggers. I want to try the mage one first ma with the bow. Because I want to use a blast rain, the blast rain version. So I'm kind of excited about that. But if I have to and it's still a little bit weak, then I'll just swap to the main one and just play that. Uh, uh, let me go over... What's this? I don't need that anymore. So let me go to uh, history. Uh, if it wasn't being delayed, I'd say it'd be funger, funner. Nah, man. It's, I like that it's being delayed. That That is a very good thing. That's a very good thing that it's being delayed. Um, because then we get to do the, then we get to do um, the PTR for a week. They can have plenty of time to fix anything and make it, awesome so to me it's it's very good now it does suck that you know we got two more two two and a half more weeks of um season three but that's fine because i can play more last of Pac and i can play uh poe i can play i can play the new league of poe so where the did I just like breeze over this? Where is Andy at? I'm making the thumbnail right now, guys. The tampering. Dude, where the hell is Andy at?
Andy, where are you? Dude, is it well, like way earlier? Dude, I can't find it. I can't find it. Uh, what? Wait, what was it? Oh, I got you, New Axe. Yeah, man. I mean, definitely play what you're gonna play, brother. I'll be on season four. Oh, dude, I got a pee so bad. trying to find this Andy dude why can't I find Andy I gotta pee guys hold on Good luck. It's got like a hundred hours of stuff. Wait, what? What are we talking about? <laughs> I feel like I just bypassed Andy. good look at her uh... she looks so scary I missed the crafting stuff and the supposed so there's primal ancients there's primal ancients new axe there is primal ancients so essentially you can find an item that drops on the ground that has two perfect stats it's completely random but it can find two perfect stats and those stats are increased by 1.5 times. So 150%. Not like a really good shot. That's pretty good. 
Well, no, because all the stats now, New X, have three stats instead of four. So your stats have three instead of four. So two of the three get get to be perfect. Yeah, New X, didn't you see that part? You didn't see, you didn't see, like, you didn't hear me talking about that? Quick little yeah. shot of the summoning for and burial. So the stats will now be three stats. The primal ancients will have two. I'm, 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 I'm like finishing the uh, thumbnail and then I got to edit the video. But so your base items will start with three and then you can craft two more on. So you can have five. Yep. So this is before, this is after. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Zoom this out. There she is in all her glory. Yeah, you get three and then you can craft two on. And the crafting system has com been completely changed. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing the thumbnail right now, and then, um... But now I got to edit it. Dude, season, dude, when you watch this, you can watch mine if you don't want to watch the full thing, New Axe. But I'm going to tell you it's it's all dubs. It's all dubs. The only negative dubs to me is I'm not even considering the extension of season 3 AL cuz I think that's important to make sure that we get they get all this right. But like one is we didn't get any seasonal information. We didn't get any, um, we didn't get any, uh, no seasonal theme information, no, um, armory and then no loot filter. But obviously with these changes, after you see them, 
Like, they even said that they don't... I don't think we'll need a loot system. Because another thing on here is, like, for example, if you're playing a, uh, a Necro, like, these base items, like, your main stat is only going to drop for Necro. Like, so Intelligence will only drop on this wand, on the wands, while you're playing a Necro. Like, you won't get, like, Strength, you won't get Dexterity, you won't get none of that stuff. So... It is, uh, it is much, 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 much better. Um, so here's what I want to do, guys. Let me, let me pull up my um, editing software. Let me see how long this video is going to take. Because what I might do is we're almost at four hours because that was a long dev stream that they did. If this rendering is going to take a while, what I'll probably do is stop the stream, get this video up, and then we'll start it back up for tonight. Um, yeah, but new acts. You can trade legendaries. You can trade legendaries, dude. Huge. Huge, man. Absolutely huge. Yep. And new acts. The crafting system that... Oh, and don't forget the, the Codex of Power. Huge dub. Huge dub. Absolute huge dub. Absolute huge dub. The Codex of Power being in here, every single power. Not just the normal ones, every power. And you level it up. They took that idea straight from Rax, man. They better give him credit. They better give him credit. That's all I'm saying. Dude, I'm going to have to play the same song on this the whole time. Jeez. Yep, that's all right. We're just going to play the same song on this thing the whole time. Because I don't even care. Because these, these are good changes. If I can find the music I like. Yep, there it goes. All right, give me two seconds, guys. Two seconds. Well, guys, I think Diablo. Well, guys, I think Diablo 4 might be saved. It might be saved. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the brand new... Perfect. New video that we're going to be talking about. The dev stream just ended the campfire chat. We are going to be going over everything as quickly and as promptly as possible but i believe the game has been saved my faith has been shaked multiple times and season four is going to be insane now i do want to start off this video just talking about a couple of things that are not in the video so that way if you guys ask me down in the comments uh you already have your answer One all right cool 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 All right, we're going to see how long this takes to render. If it's going to take a while, guys, then uh, I'm going to stop the stream. We'll let this render. I'll get this video up, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll turn the stream back on. This is why I need a new PC. There we go. All right, sick. All right, cool, cool, cool. Re-imprint this legendary power onto any gear that you find going forward. That's right. So if Ruben finds a 10% roll, you know, on something mm -hmm. else, Let's see that, that how long now it going takes, to go ahead man. and salvage that item down. That's gonna, that 10% version is now going to replace the 6% version he has right yep. now. 
and that's the new version that you have. So when we're talking about upgrading, what we really mean is like as you find the better versions of these aspects, they replace the older ones. Now, every time you, you decide you want to imprint uh, the Codex of Power, that's going to be the version that you get from that point forward. So if you find a max roll the first time, are you just super lucky you have it forever? <laughs> you are super lucky, and you would have that forever, yes. Cool. You can continually imprint it. However, the, uh, the ranks of legendaries, you won't be able to find a max roll of these legendaries in World Tiers 1 and 2 when you're just starting out your journey. We have uh, extended the range, so a lot of legendaries used to say, hypothetically, if, if a legendary rolled between 20% and 30%, uh, now we've extended that range from 20 to 35%. Mm. But those like 30 to 35 percent, the highest range, the most powerful versions, those are only. Let's right, see how long it says. Four in the later game, so this says, does give you a bit more progression. Wait, wait, so wait, 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 wait you can find it? it early, and you can upgrade it, but then you're going to find like an versions, hour and a half for it to render. And uh, if, if we actually can we okay. go back to the build really quickly because yeah. uh, well, and, that's just uh, all the resources. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Destin, have a great day, man. Big dub for Diablo. Okay, chat. So this is what we're gonna do. We got three hours and thirty minutes right now on the stream. So uh, I'm gonna end stream. I'm gonna let my video rendered. I'm gonna get it uploaded to YouTube. That way you guys can go watch it and see my thoughts, etc. Or if you missed the campfire chat, then you can watch that. After that, I'm going to get some food, and we'll then we'll start up for the stream for tonight. Okay, guys? We're going to get popping. So, I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, Stinker Burns with the raid. Appreciate the raid right at the end. Thank you so much. I hope you had a great stream. Um, but we're going to get that video out, and then we'll be back for the back end of tonight's stream, ready to grind. So, hang tight, guys. Just chill. Have some fun grinding. We'll be back here very shortly. So, I'll see everybody very soon guys so stick around as always stay gaming i'm super excited i'll see everybody here in a little bit peace